Welcome, everyone. We have myself, Michael. We have Antranik. We have Aram. We have Dan, Evilham, Anthony, Jan B, Dave C, Goran M, and others trickling in. The last call was a huge success. It went three hours, and I think we've touched a nerve. I only have one bit of news, which is that as of yesterday, there will be a beehive con in Tokyo as per tradition at Asia BSD con. That will be the 31st. It touches on virtualization topics, but uh, non FreeBSD uh, virtualization topics such as OpenBSD, VMD, NetBSD, Hexum, and Zen are all fair game. And uh, jail topics are certainly something to fit in there. So welcome everyone. Uh, who has yeah, topics sure. today? Sure. What was that? I, I do have some updates. Please. Uh, sure. So, uh, and apologies that I'm on my phone, uh, hence my breathing. Is, is Goran on the call? Mecca? Yes. Yes. Yeah, so he did some Amazing. awesome work. Uh, yeah, well, the the work was with the, as I promised, I worked on uh, parsing all the config files. Yep. Uh, so that is done and the uh, review is submitted. Uh, and I talked to the uh, reviewer, just uh, Alan doesn't feel comfortable merging the code that he've never seen before. So we mm -hmm. might need a new reviewer for that. Uh, I'm gonna get back to that in just a second. Um, <clears throat> so the, I think the, the patch is pretty simple. So it works uh, as much as I could stretch it. But if you could shoot arrows at it and tell me if it breaks for you uh, on on current, I would be happy to, to take a look. Uh, the idea was to use the glob, which is uh, G O G L O B, yeah. Uh, to get all the files as the shell gets them when uh, the asterisk is used or the, how it's called, the question mark. Uh, so that, that's basically how the list of files to parse uh, gets assembled. So, so Goran's patch is actually interesting. It's the right way to do rather than my patch, which was the hack way to do that the one that we discussed about last week and it does and there is also dan's comment which is yes both of these patches require an uh, a, a notice in 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 updates as in first um all of the jails are going to start all of the jails that are defined in any file are going to start automatically if you have jail list uh, assigned to empty that's one major change. And the other change, which is um, if someone has a global variable anywhere, it's going to affect everywhere. Uh, so let's say you have oh, mount shit. devfs. Yeah, if let's say you have mount devfs in any global variable, as a global variable in any file, let's say uh, at the uh, jail.conf.d uh, foo.conf, that is going to get inherited into every other location. So now you have to be very careful when you set your uh, global variables in any of the GL files, unless it's specified. And Goran, did you, did you end up choosing to parse all the files regardless if the dash F is defined? As in well, GL that dash F. That, that's actually not Paula, as Jan suggests in the, conf, uh, in the chat. Okay. The thing is that, uh, okay, let me take a step back. There is no global configuration parameters in the configuration. There, there, there is no such thing. Uh, the way the parser says 
uh, that is as a wild card jail. Wild card jail is denoted as, well, this is the shortest uh, syntax to declare wild card jail. Uh, so it has nothing in it and its name is an asterisk. Uh, if you're using jail.conf, uh, this asterisk or wildcard jail can appear anywhere in the file. And on the last call, we had an example that goes something like this. Let me just write it down. Uh, okay, so this is made up example with IDs and the last asterisk is gonna overwrite the, the J ID. Are you showing uh, us an example? In it's the, in the chat. Zoom chat. In the chat. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. And if you're actually comfortable with it, Goran, go ahead and put that in the doc. Just drop it below the text in context, and I'll make it pretty with like career. Uh, okay. Let me open the document so I can do it right away. And the copy and paste is a nightmare on Zoom. It might work. Nope. Didn't work. I'd have to copy <laughs> them out separately. But I'm happy. To. Okay. Okay. Wait. Let me Maybe, see. Maybe. Uh, easier to just save the current state of the chat and then copy and paste from an editor, which is a sad state of affairs, but. Okay, uh, I'm gonna get back to copy and pasting this when I'm Go not Go ahead and describe talking. it. I'll copy it for you. I'll have it in just a second. You can clean it up. Okay. Yeah. Boom. Um, Boom. So this is what you put in chat for discussion. Yes. So the the last three lines are uh, uh, first line is the shortest syntax for the wildcard drill. Uh, the last three lines are an example where you can declare what ID to be one by default if nothing else says otherwise. Inside uh, the Yes. Sorry to cut in, uh, but I'm not quite sure because you can also have uh, global assignments outside of any named jail block, like path equals slash jails uh, dollar name or something. I will get back to that in just a second. Okay. So uh, on the Third line, you would expect the J uh, jail to have ID of two, but it actually won't because the last line is going to overwrite it. Now, uh, wildcard jail is actually a, a, a global parameter. And whenever you have a chunk of global parameters, it's a wildcard jail. So you can pretend, and that's what actually the structure is doing. You can pretend that the global parameters actually don't exist and that global parameters are declared inside the, the wildcard jail. That's, uh, I mean, that's what the code does. Uh, or at least that's how I understand the code to behave. Uh, so to get back uh, to the jailconf and Pola, you can break that with this. I am actually retaining the original behavior just scattered around, uh, on multiple files. So in that context, I think this is actually retaining the, the original behavior.
And if you can't type that directly in the, the Google Doc. Jan's question is interesting. So uh, global yeah, variable the, path and the yes, wild the card. answer is yes. Okay. Wow. Okay. I could repeat that for the group. Um, uh, okay. Do you want me to write that in the in the wherever you are right now? Well, yeah, whatever is clear for the group. Okay, let me see. So this. Oh, that was Jan. Sorry. Okay, now let's. Michael, do you want to do the, the formatting? I'll go ahead and yeah, get the text right and I'll make it pretty. Okay, okay. So yeah, these two are equivalent and that's why I said the global parameters actually don't exist. Uh, once the parser finished with them, they don't exist. They are kind of global by being within the scope of the wildcard because they apply, they apply to all jails. Uh, yes, that, that's the consequence of what the parser but, does. Yeah, but what actually uh, is happening, how to say, under the hood is every jail, wildcard or otherwise get the J sequence. Uh, J sequence is just a number. It's not a jail ID. So it's on the load from, I think, zero and increasing. Now, how the when all of them get uh, parsed and assigned a uh, J sequence, uh, they uh, they get the variable um, substitution. And first, you substitute with all the variables from the wildcard jails that have a J sequence number less than yours. Is this number just inside the parser and yes. building up the variable assignment to be passed to the kernel and to be used in the jail uh, command? Or is this uh, sequence number actually stored in the jail struct inside the kernel? It's only used in... Uh... Uh, while loading the configuration in the jail utility. So it's all mm -hmm. user space. And it's pretty temporarily, so to say. It's just to know which jail was declared before mm -hmm. you and which was declared after. Well, and... when I say you, uh, when you're looking at the one specific jail, something is declared before you, something after you. Uh, okay. So J sequence is growing, and that tells you when, when the uh, when all the jails are uh, loaded and their values are still not replaced with the actual variable values. Uh, mm -hmm. This sequence number is uh, okay. It works like this: give me all the uh, wildcard jails that have a sequence number less than mine and then add merge all those options from those wildcard jails uh, into the list of my options. Wow. Then overwrite with my options that are declared inside the jail, and then some later possibly wildcard jail is gonna overwrite it because it has a J sequence number uh, greater than that specific jail. Um, I have a few questions because this brings up a few corner cases uh, in my mind. What happens with multi-valued attributes like multiple start or pre-start hooks? Do they get concatenated? Uh, do they yeah. do new assignments replace all older assignments? Um, does it differ for uh, no. single and multi-value? 
and, and, yeah, and yeah, 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 to clarify your question, you're talking about multi-value assignments inside a wild card, let right? Me, no, no let, um, let me show something. So for example, I normally uh, set the exec.start to something like bin sh.rc, but for some gels, I overwrite it. And so far, I have a jail.conf file for every jail and just use Ansible to template out the uh, not quite global variables for every jail. And then override those I want to override inside my Ansible templating instead of doing it with the parser. Because what's missing for me inside the existing parser is the ability for a jail to reference a shared uh, configuration snippet. Something like, this is my, this type of jail, but this is an instance of it. Except as, as I just now learned, I could do this if I can fit it within the wildcard namespacing by setting it for some, right, um, right. encoding so, it as so a, the, uh, template to be shared as a suffix uh, behind a wildcard. Uh, so if so, I so imagine... structure my jail namespacing to match what the parser already does, I could use a single jail.conf shared like this. So imagine you have a scenario where in your Etsy jail.conf, the main mm -hmm. old school jail.conf, you define a global variable that says mm -hmm. uh, exec start equals bin sh uh, at CRC. Well, this is something that all of us do. Okay, so that thing is gonna get inherited to every other jail, unless if a jail has that defined inside of it. So if you have Etsy uh, jail.conf.d foo.conf, and if that one has its own exec uh, start, Obviously, it will execute its own, not the global one. And this is pretty clear. Always work that way. Now, the problem is if, if there is a file that has been parsed between the jail.conf and the jail.conf.dfoo.conf. So let's say there's a file named um, etsy jail.conf.d0, the number zero, that is, dot .conf. That is going to get parsed, but it's going to get parsed after the jail.conf and before the foo.conf. What happens um, is if inside the zero.conf you have a uh, exec start that is a different value, for example, uh, I want to say, you know, bin sh etc cr instead of rc, now that variable is going to get inherited into the uh, other, the, into the foo.conf. But... Does that make sense? Let me uh, boil down an example. Sorry, did I get that right? So if the zero zero file contains the exec dot uh, start that has a preference above a uh, jail specific value? Or how, how no. No, it becomes new default value, and unless Jill says otherwise, that's going to be used. Oh. Um, so, yes, that be... is a polar violation. Mm -hmm. Well, um, I'm not sure. I, I think we, we kind of violated the, the common sense there with the Walker jails to start with. So, okay. I'm just going with the flow here. And to be clear, you didn't break it with wildcard. Jail broke it. The wildcards have been around for, for a while. And the thing is, it's always what, what I know that you can shoot yourself in the foot because I've done it myself where I've had something globally defined and then locally redefine and said, why isn't this working like it should be working? Um, what is the current, what happens now when you have a jail.conf? Does, does it, I would think that it would override what's in jail. Sorry, jail.conf.d0.x for a jail. Are we, are we worried about having global values within a sub jail? 
if so, they just get parsed in the same order that they would be, like alphabetically. So if um, you have- Is it actually which um, collocation is used for sorting those? Because this is another thing which could really explode in someone's face if, if they have a locale when running the jail tool as root and they have a locale other than uh, C and the order to be used for sorting the names changes depending on locale. Yeah. That's, uh, so if you change lo lo locale, that's so up to should, you. Which sort order is used on the path and does it just assume that reading a directory is the right order to be used? So it, for example, on ZFS, if you just use get dear ends, you get an unsorted collection of files in a directory. Um, well, Which, I would sorry. assume that it would be a sorted order. And if you're gonna worry about but, which sort, that depends on the locale and that is left up to the admin. In, but what I'm worrying about is someone running jail as root from the lock-in shell, maybe through sudo inheriting some locale, which changes the startup order, thereby changing the active configuration. I have once destroyed a Postgres database that way by uh, corrupting the indices. That sounds like something we can discuss another time because that, sure. that is sort of very broadening the point that we're trying to figure out right now, which is, what? I, I believe it's how to globally defined items mm -hmm. affect other jails. So, uh, 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 um, 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 uh, uh, apologies, um, Michael, based on your experience, did Beehive ever had a breaking change? And like, did you have to deal with that ever? Because if we are doing a Pola violation, not because of what we did, but because of the way that jail is architected, I mean, jail.conf is architected, we might need to notify like the whole planet that, hey, if you have a global variable defined in literally any other file, accept, uh, expect destruction, kind of. <laughs> Um, at but, some point, we have to draw a line and say, if you're using Unix, there are foot guns. And, and I, I think it's reasonable to say this, this change, for example, isn't in 13, but it is in 14, and it paralyzes jail startup. And if you have these defaults here over here, which is not common, but technically possible, then you can expect problems. Um, it, it's definitely something we can, but, once we're sort of more clear on on finalizing the patch we can go out to people who have large numbers of jails and say knowing you would this affect you or not but do we want to i don't think we want to try and solve every single corner case on sort of day two of our call no but we want to get an estimation of how much impact there is and who to involve in the process, because if it does, is expected to break existing configurations, this is something which has to go near the top of the 14 release notes, not totally hidden yeah. in some even, footnote even in a later yeah. update. Yeah. How frequently are wildcard jails used? I had not heard that term very often. Plus, so, if the various management tools in Bastille are not leveraging them heavily, I wouldn't worry too much because that's what's standing up for me. Go ahead. Um, mm. I can tell you that all of my uh, jails have their yeah. own jail.conf file with a global variable section and then the per jail configuration right now. That would be one with wildcards. That's a feature that arrived much later than my activity with jail. <laughs> There, 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 there is another way to solve this, by the way. It just got me hitting. There is another way to solve this, but it would mostly depend on Goran fixing his patch where, I mean, I'm imagining where if there is a global variable defined in a file other than jail.conf, the master jail.conf, it should be scoped to that single file so it doesn't break changes. Yes. Does that make sense? 
That makes a lot of no, sense to me. No, no, okay. <laughs> not with the current parser. Okay, uh, I mean, this is, this is sort of the point where you go, what we're really solving here is shell scripts are bad. That, that's what we're doing. We're saying, what happens when you have global scope? And the answer is you use a programming language, um, not a shell script. And I just want to put that out there. I'm not saying the approach is wrong. I'm just saying we should always bear in mind that shell scripts are bad. And when we deal with these corner cases, this is why shell scripts are bad. And it's okay to go, I'm not going to fix that. If you really, if, if that's really your problem, then um, that's stopping you from using this tool, then you should use a programming language. Uh, and we have a plethora of those available. Um, yeah, backwards compatibility is important. Moving forwards is also important. And the question here is, for this corner case, do we actually have any users at all? That's one. And secondly, given if any of these users exist, um, would they read it in release notes? <laughs> to be notified about it. Uh, it, is, it is totally important. Yeah, and you're right. That we so, don't want to break stuff for people. Um, let me share an example shell of, problem. Let me share an example of what kind of gel.conf I'm generating using templating with mm. the configuration management system. By the way, Michael, it's not about um, wildcard jails. Uh, it's a construct in, in the parser, but the, the global parameters declared in different files are also wildcard uh, jails and the parser doesn't see the difference. Hmm. Is it ambiguity that's the problem? It's more of a... Why do we even have multiple wildcard jails? I mean, uh, I don't know what the use case for it is. And I try to imagine one, but I just can't understand the logic uh, mm. in having multiple. Right now we have at least in theory two if you write a, a wildcard jail with a, the true wildcard, just a star, and the assignments outside of any jail block, then you implicitly have two wildcards because the parser expands the unscoped ones into a wildcard, that one. And what I can imagine and I've seen in someone else's deployment is that they have multiple levels of wildcarding. So that they have something like basically the global assignments and then something for anything under this domain, anything under the other domain. That for that, example, okay. So should we be concentrating more on the overall view of what we're trying to accomplish and then later identify edge cases that we need to go through rather than going through edge cases now. I, I just want to try and get, get here, here's what we're trying to achieve in this discussion and get that done and then leave the finer details for later. I know that there's there's real problems in, in do, doing it a certain way, but if we can say, listen, yeah, we all agree that this is what we want to accomplish and then work towards what we're trying to accomplish because I don't want to get bogged down in details that are very, very important, mm -hmm. but not to be solved today. I think... Uh, I, I agree with Dan's point, which is, uh, and I, Goran, if you can confirm this, if we just literally modify the way of the parser works, like, you know, we don't change the interface, you know, so everyone's config file stays the same, but we modify the parser so it can understand the J sequences in the concept of globally and locally, then we will not have a polar violation and every user is going to stay happy. And we're going to add the new concept of feature where in jail.conf, that's the only location where you define a global variable. Uh, if you want to have any other global global variable, you can't. Uh, if you have a global variable in a single file, that's scoped to a file. If you want to 
Does, does, does that make sense? So a global variable for all the jails goes into only jail.com. And if you wanna, if you have a global variable in a file, that's only for that file, not all the jails. So keeping it that way, we will not have a pull law violation and we can add the new features such as uh, using global variables for non jail.com files, the non master files. So that would kind of solve all the problems as, 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 as I can see. Someone short? No. <laughs> the so, longer version is um, uh, it's quite a lot of work with the current implementation. And I don't think it's worthwhile. Um, one thing about jails is that it's implemented in 1999. And a lot of things it uses are, they can be sold better. Uh, one of the things that are better is, for example, Anvil, uh, let's just say UCL for start. Uh, we all agreed that you, having a UCL would be nice. Okay, so cool. Uh, but... For the communication with the kernel, it currently uses tail queue and custom struct and so on. But in FreeBSD 11, which is 2016, we came up with, we as a FreeBSD, uh, came up with something called Anvil List. Anvil List is uh, short for, uh, NV is short for a name value. And if you have a mental image of a JSON, it's appropriate because it has arrays, nested, uh, simple types, and so on. Uh, but it works in a kernel and in user space, and it can be packed and unpacked so that, uh, yeah, Beehive uses and Beehive config uses and release. And there's a huge number of uh, of uh, subsystems that use Envy List. I, I learned about it through enumerating sound devices. So it, it's really broadly used to just uh, jail dating from the last millennia just didn't get all the, all the nice libraries in it. And uh, having it with uh, Envy List it's more flexible, and in the end, you uh, you can end up with a syscall that will say, okay, how about you pack this into array of bytes, send it to the kernel, and that syscall is actually create. So you uh, currently you have a bunch of parameters that you're, I think, setting via uh, sysctl, but I'm not sure. Uh, I still didn't get enough time to read the kernel side. And uh, with NVList, for example, you could have configuration inside the kernel that is parsed. Uh, well, array of bytes would be unpacked to the NVList and you would have the same structure, the clone of a structure you have in a user space so you do the same programming. Uh, it, it, stuff looks the same. And you can throw out some of the code. The more you throw out, the, the better, right? And with the Envil list, there, there's one thing that, that struck me. If you have the same structure everywhere, how hard would it be the, to save in a running jail the configuration for, for the whole config file? Because your parser would generate it, we would send to kernel code, it would parse it and create, allocate memory for it and create a pointer to it. So one thing that like bringing jail utility to 2023 would be one of the things is Envil list. And having that, is I think more basic than what we have with the, the idea you're stressing out and running. And it's not that I'm against it. 
I'm just thinking how about we update the, the internal structures first so they are more flexible so we can done the actual work. I, um, I absolutely understand and agree with what you're saying. I think, and this is a good group, by the way, because we have people who want to talk about UCL and there's also the argument for NVList. And I think this would be the perfect conversation. It's like, okay, instead of fixing issues that was created in the last 20 years, let's do kind of a complete rewrite of the internals and not break anything and bring kind of jail 2.0 to all of this. And we will be even now closer to the zones style uh, in kernel structures, which DCH was talking about last week, right? Stateful, stateful things. So, uh, yeah. And that was uh, John's motivation with the Beehive config was that if you look at the original review, there were many complaints that, oh, you should use JSON, oh, you should use UCL, you should use all these things. And his response was, well, no, here's the foundation for all of those. Go for it. Go crazy. Mm -hmm. Just, just before we sort of switch um, conversation, is there anything more we want to add for Goran's side on, on his patch? Because that's where we started off. Yeah, Goran, has, do you have something actionable from all this or did we torpedo your work? Uh, you... No, I, I actually thought about, <laughs> well, when I figured I'm not smart or experienced enough with jail. So I said, okay, if you can be smart, can you be dumb? And uh, being dumb means, okay, let's say jails don't exist uh, and we are implementing them right here, right now. What would we do? What would the modern uh, FreeBSD base code uh, comprise of? And it's five things. Uh, it's always the make to bind them all. Right, it's it's the it's the one component that is omnipresent. Uh, UCL for config, and we list for internal, as Jan says, internal in-memory representation of the configuration. Uh, Arc parse to, to parse the the uh, uh, command line arguments and XO, so you can emit your data config whatever you're interested in as uh, either ucl uh, uh, json yaml or i don't know if it supports anything else so i would argue and probably a lot of freebsd developers would agree with us if we would start with really experienced freebsd people jails right now it's a it's enormous effort, but let's say we do. I think these five technologies would be the cornerstone of um, uh, uh, um, how it's called the the user space side. Uh, Envilist being easy to communicate over socket or uh, between kernel and user space make it. Uh, Oh, you missed make and uh, I don't know. I forgot. <laughs> there is a recording, but good. <laughs> yeah. So I'm also not clear on which uh, technologies you wanted to uh, focus on. So. So yeah, my, my thinking was, okay, if this is like. Let's say we just agreed that that's the perfect uh, combination of libraries to use in a code. Uh, the easy thing would be to create a new utility that works like that and it would be great. But I think it, it's more beneficial if we push jail utility towards the... the uh, this libraries and envilist being uh, internal, um, how to say, core of a parser of a jail utility of what it does. I think that should be replaced first. 
Now, today I learned there's a person uh, called Jamie who uh, yeah. is obviously maintaining jail. So I intend to, to check with him what is this is this same? Did, did I uh, over uh, oversee something? Engineer. Or maybe I'm blind to something? Yeah, over engineered or or right. But currently there's a combination of tail Q and something something with the parser and mm. uh, quite a few structures around uh, just to load everything from the conf file. And I think combination of UCL and NVList today makes it makes it perfect. I, I don't, or at least the least bad. Uh, we don't have a better better solution today in base. So the question is the so, kernel up to this task or is and this is all user land or is there, there more work to be done in the kernel to accommodate it, this? It, it is oh, yeah, the fifth both. One, sorry, the fifth one is arc parse. So it's arc parse. parse is arc. Arc. Uh, the, uh, so the, the, the problem with the kernel is that it only saves uh, the process information, right? So the concept of a jail in the in the kernel is made of two parts. A process has a prison ID, and then a prison has a struct with all the values in it, such yeah. as what it's allowed or not allowed to do. Uh, I think it, there is a lot of room for improvement. And if we do these appropriate improvements, we might be able to reach more zones style structures in there. Uh, and not, 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 and I, I, again, I want to uh, point this again, like we had in the last call, the, the, the kern underscore jail file uh, is, 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 is huge. It's not messy per se. There are a lot of go-tos, which is fine, but it, I think there's a room for improvement for sure. So, uh, and uh, we, we are, I, I don't think we're that much of uh, experienced programmers to do that all day, but uh, appropriate uh, guidance from Jamie or anyone else who has worked on the jail subsystem in the last 10 years would make our lives easier. Like we're discovering things by reading the source code. That's the kind of the, 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 the sad part that we're yeah. discovering things by reading the source code, not the documentation. Is it lucky we hit the course? <laughs> so, uh, one of the I was, things, I, uh, sorry, go ahead. One of the things I've sometimes wished for as a user was uh, volatile key value mappings stored inside the kernel to maybe yeah. a key value map from string to, to string to be tracked as part of a prison struct in the kernel so that I would have some place to keep some settings about a jail it can later be retrieved in some hook in jail.com, for example. Yeah, That's... so we talked a little bit about this, about this last week. And so um, the, the two things that's useful is when you think of how we manage ZFS um, data sets when we jail and unjail them and their mount points, that uses a thing called um, OSD, which I will send a link for shortly, but it's in last week's meeting minutes. And um, at European Secon, I asked, what is there anything we could use to do that? And the sort of resounding response was, use that. We already did it for the ZFS stuff. It's, it's pretty sort of ideal. Um, it depends on how much you want to have. So my specific use case here for this thing is, I have a bunch of ephemeral jails, which I need to tag with some structure um, so that I can query from some other program elsewhere and go, give me all the jails that have this tag. I don't need piles and piles of metadata. Um, the second thing I had was um, currently all of the tools we use have um, a config file, which represents the idealized state of the jail and bears no resemblance to what it's actually doing at any time. And I would much rather have that configuration file either not exist at all for me personally or loaded in once um, a jail creation and thereafter maintained as a kernel structure. So you can then say, 
for Joe, 57, give me the current state and what is the next thing I need to do to it? Do I need to unmount something or mount something? Um, and to me, those feel like very, very similar use cases, whether it's key value mappings in an NB list or whether it's data in the UCL, um, it's sort of the same sort of thing. Is that related to your state machine pro proposal? Yeah, the state machine is merely the um, trying to, how do, how do I put that? Trying to explain what the problem is for the user, which is I have some jails and I don't know what they're doing and I have no way of finding out. Because that, that's what happens when you have like thousands of jails, you're halfway through unmounting them and remounting them and, and upgrading them and one of them hangs. And you go, what do I do now? And the answer is we don't know, we can't tell you, um, but we do know it stopped. And we can't tell you how far through it goes. So people end up leaving on large scale jail system, you end up leaving behind the, the jail tools and base and you're not handwriting your own stuff with rules like we never do any mounting inside the jail system itself. We do all of that from the operating system outside because when it fails, we know precisely what happened and where, did, and where it went. Yeah. So yeah, the state machine thing is, is ideal. Um, it's not necessarily um, the yes. answer. Um, I've looked into uh, libjail in the past and but it um, said that everything uses um, global names in a namespace instead of exposing uh, a file descriptor based interface like process descript descriptors, uh, which were added for trusted BSD and uh, the Nuxi um, cloud ABI slash capsicum where you can reference a running process by a file descriptor and suddenly all your name race conditions uh, are defined array. So it would be probably for these kinds of inferior jails very useful to have a jail descriptor and have the jail live as long as the file descriptor, which would then lend itself very well to having a jail demon manage those and use us. I was actually I was actually thinking about that uh, and, uh, and we have point. We, we have a road ahead before that actually. Of I course, agree. That would be yeah. a far reaching change. Um, it would put us in a much better state. Totally agree, and I just think we need to do homework before that, oh. and uh, to to um, reference the volatile key value that you mentioned. Yes. Uh, Envy list is like su best suited for that, but it's if I'm right and we do it, let's say my way. Although I started reading jail code like two weeks ago, so I'm no expert. Mm -hmm. uh, we will change the jail utility all the way and not touch the kernel at all. That way we will test and we list configuration as much as we can before we push it into the kernel. But it's not that it's hard. I would just like to do everything before that and kind of have people test it and maybe uh, uh, work with, uh, I don't know, 14 release. Oh, no, no, that's too soon. That, that's like a yeah. few months. But uh, you get my yes. point. Uh, let's say it's a 14 release. Oh. Doesn't matter. Uh, people can have it and uh, report bugs if we did something wrong because everything should be the same for the user and but for the kernel. As long as you don't have to change the kernel ABI in any way, you don't, you're not bound by the normal release schedule. It could just exist as a port uh, while in development, making it much easier to share progress and move fast and break stuff without breaking the base system? Well, 
Yes. But... That, that, that does sound very intriguing. Like a lot of people could test this without us it used to be it. during the FreeBSD nine, I think eight or nine. Yeah, during FreeBSD eight, that the new kind of jail parsing and so on was available and a smarter RC.d script as a port called jail two, I think, uh, to handle dependencies and so on and multiple jail.conf files. So and uh, that and, way, uh, the, they weren't bound by tracking the base system and observing polar constraints during development. Well, I mean, just to be clear, we started the conversation with the fact that either of our patches would break something into the system. Mm -hmm. to the idea that let's just say bye-bye to jail.conf and make kind of a UCL support, which uh, in, in our last call, Jan, we discussed mm -hmm. that there are some tools currently in base. I think it's CTLD that supports having an argument that tells the utility, oh, this is not the old CTLD file format, but rather mm -hmm. a UCL file format. And we can use something like that in the jail well, utility. Uh, the, I think the, uh, the um, is it CTLD or is it the iSCSI initiator, not the, yes. I think it's the iSCSI initiator, which supports the old format from the user space initiator and its the own format. And for jails to maintain optimal compatibility, because jail dot, uh, the, you always use the dot .conf suffix as long as you use a different suffix like dot .ucl and maintain compatibility with the new format once. And it could be as simple as putting a revision number of the UCL schema in the form config file where you, to make use of some new feature, you would have to declare a um, a parameter in your UCL config that you're following the new schema and to be validated uh, against that. Also yeah, I mean, from even something as simple as the um the services in jails are started by like the um the rc.d script and you can simply have a jail underscore enable UCL equals yes or something. If if yeah. you actually use UCL for parsing you get into a much better state because UCL is a very flexible configuration language. Yeah. And as yeah. such, you don't need to support multiple configuration files as in your command line interface as long as your expected default config files include our subdirectories. The idea there is just like RSPMD does it, which is a good example of what you can do with UCL. Uh, oh, sorry? Uh, the RSPMD spam filter. Oh, yeah, yeah, which is what? Um, uh, it's a good example yeah. for what UCL enables a daemon to do. Basically, it has a slightly convoluted example configuration for starting from a single file, which then tries to include all the sub configuration in certain directories and those can then be overwritten or merged and so on. And you get to hook in at any point in the created uh, tree of nested sub configurations. And that, you don't have to have the file system namespace uh, completely follow the tree to be built up as part of uh, UCL and in the end, an NV list could be the result returned by this parser. It could also be the result by the old parser. So NV list would be the format, the parser, whichever parser is used, gives to the jail user space logic after parsing. So you break it up into parse the text file which is also suitable for human consumption into an NV list, which would contain the directory at the top level with all of the jails. 
with everything expanded out. So, so wait, I, I actually didn't know about this. So UCL has the ability to do include if you want to. It doesn't just means... have uh, ability to include. It has the ability to delegate uh, different priorities while including and controlling whether conflicting keys are an error, merged, or replaced. Oh, okay. Well, and that... you can even have something like try include. So oh. that you could have a, if such and such a file, so-and-so override exists, yep. include it with a semantic of override keys in my level of the configuration. So override only the mount points if such a file exists. You could have this a file is... to declare only overrides to the already generated through merging and inheritance uh, mount points of a jail after template expansion and so on. UCL is a very flexible beast, which is why this, the code is so large. This, this makes it, UCL a lot more interesting for the jail and stuff. You can like... have also, this is the other thing, which is missing from the current jail. Often I found that I have a certain set of behavior in a jail which doesn't really fit in the normal behavior. Basically, I have some shared configuration snippet and then I want to include that and in UCL I can do that in a variety of ways for example by putting it somewhere it normally wouldn't look and then having a sim link to this snippet in a directory uh, UCL has by the general structure of the configuration been instructed to try and include all files ending in a certain suffix in this directory following some links. So, so, so that I get means... to factor something out. Let's say I want to run four instances of some service. Um, I have three servers, each running four jails with Elasticsearch because the Java heap doesn't scale. So I have four big servers and I have to run four jails on them to make good use of the available main memory with Elasticsearch, I run four nodes. This is what I used to do. And now I have my three servers with four jails each forming a Elasticsearch cluster. So I and could imagine all the shared configuration is put in a single file and then sim linked in instead of having some dependency on an external configuration management tool like Ansible, Chef, Puppet, Solstack, or whatever, um, actually write out all of this duplication, which is what I'm forced to do right now. Um, so so uh, let me see. So I'm imagining something like this. Now, all of, all of the, these things that LibUCL can do is solving almost all of the problems that we have as jail uh, management vendors like MyJailer and Gorans, like and CBS and everyone, like it it solves yes. a lot of problems. What I'm thinking from a process point of view is, we fork the jail utility, quote unquote. We make jail UCL or in the ports, which is literally the same as the jail utilities, a uh, core but not the parser, and it could use libucl. As far as I know. Yeah. LibUCL is already part of a base system, but yeah. as an internal ABI, so there's no stability guarantee towards tools outside of the base system because uh, that avoids having the OpenSSL problem of having a release that's supported longer than the upstream. Mm -hmm. So if it's only an internal ABI and API, the LibUCL, uh, included in base, then only the tools in base get to rely on this version. Of course, a uh, parser is a bit less of a problem than a network facing library, but still, especially since right now, because jails are only manageable by root, because we lack a capability-based ABI to them. Uh, so right now the problem is, that if you can write the jail.conf files, which are supposedly only writable by root, you have already taken over the system. 
and def defending against parser bugs is no longer relevant because once I have write access to the file system as root, I've won on any Unix system that's usable. <laughs> But despite all of this, then the idea would be, in my idea, to have the old parser and the new parser as a user, preferably UCL, uh, hand over an NV list to the J logic, representing the past configuration. So whatever parser is used, it hands over an NV list and then the jail utility would only be scoped to act on some subset of jails. So it would always read the full configuration and know about them, but I would only scope it to act on a single jail to start it, stop it, change some of its running configuration. For example, add a new IPv4 alias IP address to a jail. If I've being reconnected, something. Um. Uh, uh, sorry, I got lost there in a bit. Uh, so to be clear, um, now the, all of these things about libucl seem a lot more interesting than what we have in jail.conf <laughs> right now. Like jail.conf is its own thing. It's not JSON, it's not libucl. It's exactly, like, it's, it's a right? grown format, homegrown yeah. for, and very limited. UCL is a beast. Okay. It's a very useful beast. It's an easy to use one, but if you want to, there are oh so many tools to solve complex real world problems around delegating subsets of a configuration. So here's what I have in my mind. Uh, as far as I know, libucl also has Lua bindings on FreeBSD. Am I right? Or is that yeah, not true? I don't that? know. It, it does. Yeah. It does. It means yeah. that we can write a proof of concept of Lua written libucl parser for jail.ucl in a couple of weeks. And um, since Lua, we also have Lua bindings to the jail uh, system call, we can do that very fast and give it to but, people to test. But you do, I think you're still kind of missing the point. UCL is Sorry. your parser. You have to oh. decide what values have like. which semantic. Okay. You have to Makes design sense. basically a schema. Yeah. Then has okay. a, and a validation for the past configuration. But you you don't no longer have to write any uh, Lexa rules or so on. Yep, 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 yep. Okay, and absolutely that, that makes sense. To be clear, that's built into UCL itself. So you can say, here's a JSON, here's a JSON schema. And you can say, here's a JSON schema. Here's the config files. Mm -hmm. um, import them if they're valid. Or, yes, or tell but, me what's wrong. Uh, and if you want better so error reports, I think you still have to write your own C code. No, definitely. I'm just thinking like if we if we make the Lua. the Lua version just for you know for testing purposes, like we we define what this the what the new schema should be for you know jail.ucl, and then we just write some small Lua code that would parse that using the libucl, and then it would call the jail create and the jail attach uh, syscalls as needed and generate the jails, and now we would have a minimum working thing that can do all of that. And uh, Uncle Dave just sent something. Flua at UCL library. Wait, this is, oh, this is merged. This is merged, yeah. right? Yes, okay. okay. I couldn't find the source code, but I did bookmark the, the review, so. <laughs> okay, <laughs> bookmark. Yeah. Uh, okay. Flua, I think, is a Lua fork and FreeBSD, yep. which replaced the floating point with integers, if I remember correctly, or something strange. It was for the loader, it, basically, wasn't it? We got it in the loader, so why don't we just have yep. it as a general user length, um, a user length thing as well? Yeah. And there's one in ZFS, right? Yeah, ZFS yeah, has its own one, one. Yeah, because reasons. And those can't be shared because ZFS had to change the Lua interpreter and implementation a bit to make use of them as part of ZFS channel programs, for example, to Correct. atomically snapshot multiple um, 
ZFS data sets as part of the same transaction and stuff like this, which could Correct. be used to improve BECTL to make it possible to have arbitrary data set layouts and still get atomic snapshotting. Okay. So could a Lua-based proof of concept work with the existing kernel infrastructure? Yes. Y yes, but I wouldn't do it. <laughs> and Trani, okay. I would Continue. otherwise <laughs> agree with you uh, that we need a proof of concept in Lua, but the UCL and Envilist is so well written, I don't know what we would gain. So I've, one of the things I think about here is, for me, the, the key purpose of, of um, something like NVList is it is your marshalling interface for structures in and out of the kernel. That, so, so correct me if I'm wrong, because I'm not a kernel dev, but that's, that's the main reason for using it. Using it. So we have this, we have, in, instead of having to expose um, kernel data structures on both sides and keep them in sync, you can go, okay, we're going to go through this NVList and then we can change structures in the kernel and we can change whatever you're using in New Zealand and everyone's happy. It's kind of like this, um, um, this middle ground. Yeah. So correct me about that. The is... key point here is we have the stack. We have U UCL configs for, for users and files. We have Lua modules to do the work of turning these things into jails for us. And at the end, right now today, we don't need to make any changes to the kernel. We don't need to use MVList because we can deal with that user land stuff at this point. At the end of that, we'll have some feedback, which is this feels wrong, we have these problems. And then there are very specific things we can go back and say to kernel developers, make that better, that doesn't work for us, and here's why. But at the moment, we risk saying, let's put Envilist here, and I'm not saying that's wrong, but we end up in a ball in the ocean situation where we have so much to do, we can't ship small pieces. And to be clear, I'm just trying to apply the startup method here. Ship as yeah, much as yeah. you can in a small pieces rather than one big chunk. Get feedback and improve. And in the end, we will have a C code that does all of this efficiently with LibUCL and uh, the GL commands and everything, et cetera, et cetera. And like the Lua thing would only be to test some things, not in order to have it the, the last version to be, of it to be shipped. Uh, and I and by the way, I do imagine that in the end we will have you know the same jail utility as we have now with a single switch that switches from old config to new config in order to keep backward compatibility. And hopefully one day all of the uh, just the same way that we did with the thing with the RC conf jail configuration. Right now, if you have an RC conf jail configuration, the parser yells at you. Sorry, RCD. GL yells at you and is like, you should move to gl.conf. I generated one for you. <laughs> yeah. And it really generates a file for you at some location, you know, for you to move to that. So we, we could use that method and tell people you should move to gl.ucl and, you know, hopefully in like 14 or whatever uh, the next. Yeah. Does that make sense, uh, Goran? Uh, well, yes, uh, but I would like to keep it.conf because everyone or dot conf and um, this is how i see the development being least uh, how to say intrusive uh, and that is for the current uh, parser if we implement and by we i mean i uh envy list that's the base for the other operations because UCL can then uh, forget about the old structures and only use envy list. Uh, how we say, uh, yeah, let me take a step back. Uh, one thing that's a problem with uh, communication over, well, almost anything between kernel and user space or between two processes over a socket is that you cannot send a struct because a struct usually has a pointer all around the memory and you can't just send that. You have to serialize it or marshal it into a sequence of bytes. Uh, so NVList is made so that it resembles JSON somewhat. Its structure is JSON-y, or at least it helps to think about it 
in that way when you're storing using it uh <clears throat> but it's not it's not made to to resemble json just we humans have a problem with abstractions and uh, it's easier with an example so any list can be almost anything and it can represent the the json uh, it can also do the it calls it pack and unpack uh, pack uh, function does from the structure to the uh, stream of bytes to the array of bytes and the unpack does the, the reverse and that's why it's uh, really useful and easy to communicate with the um, um, either kernel user space the communication or uh, inter uh, process communication over for example socket and they make socket even easier to use because there's an envy list send so you have the least amount of thinking to do anyway uh, the envy list being that great it's what i would use first and then add all the remaining uh, libraries uh, uh, to that and uh, making the change for the kernel to, to save the, the, to actually communicate using Envy list was be, uh, would be the last part. And um, okay, in the kernel, there are two operations called create and start. We administrators, when we say, I created a jail, that actually means the kernel created it and then started it. Uh, so when I say create, I'm going to use kernel ter terminology. Uh, the jail can be created in the end by using pack and unpack of the envy list. And you send the whole configuration to the jail so it does the parsing, it does unpacking, then the parsing, of course, uh, report some errors, uh, do the checking, whatever we need it to check. And then it populates the existing structure with whatever it needs to populate. That way it would, would not even change the ABI of the structure of the jail but it wouldn't still uh, save the configuration. That would be the next step because some of the uh, name value pairs are already saved. Name comes to, to mind, the jail ID, uh, dev FC, uh, rule set. And you know, everything that you can get from a running uh, jail, it's already saved in a structure. And I think it would uh, be beneficial to be saved in both places, because then if utility from user space asks for config, you just dump the, the envy list. Now that's, I, I spent a quite a few hours thinking about what would I do if I would implement a jail utility from scratch and how not to break well, anything is a bit of presumptions. Uh, I think at least do the least amount of breaking to get us to the UCL envy list in kernel config of the jail uh, and all the niceties that current FreeBSD offers in terms of libraries and frameworks and with uh, just to take one step back more, uh, there are frameworks in a kernel. And when I heard that a few years back, I was like, what? I thought it's only a web framework or something. Uh, um, so the first framework I heard about is a V image, which is used for VNet to implement virtualization of a network. Uh, so that's my plan. <laughs> well, not plan. Um, that, that's my a uh, list of wishes, what I would like to work on. And it's a really lengthy uh, implementation for somebody who's not kernel developer as myself. 
So any help on that would, would be awesome. And I think Envilist, the, the current jail utility and uh, the Lib jail help, the, the UCL can help. And we can make UCL, um, how to say, uh, we can't currently have multiple VNet interfaces and somehow denote like VNet interface zero, VNet interface one. Uh, that's not what configuration can um, do. We can do it by using smart ways, IDs, other variables and so on, right? Uh, and on are you complaining that, about the fact that interface names are still globally unique across all VNets? No. Not yet. <laughs> and then you can't it. have two VLAN zeros in different VNets. Oh, sorry. Um, wait, 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 what? If I remember, you, if I remember correctly, uh, you, you can't have two interfaces of the same name in different uh, VNets. You can't have two different interfaces of the same name? Yeah, yes. like jail one and jail two, both VNets, they both can't have FX. They can't zero. both have an LO0, for example. No, they have an LO1, cool. LO2, LO3, or something. No, that's yeah, not true. For for the state, no, the state no, of no. Its jail is not local to the jail. It has some um, bleeding from, from the parent system. Uh, the way I configure my jails is for every jail, uh, the, the like a general one, I rename the interface to ET, ETH0. Yeah. So it's consistent. So <laughs> you definitely have sh share a name, but you have to but... rename it inside the jail. Uh, yes, you can't but do the once on the, the jail gets destroyed or the interface gets detached from the jail, it reverts to its uh, true name. Original name, name. yes. Yeah. Well, yes and no. It won't be uh, returned to the host. So while you are mm -hmm. correct uh, and some kernel structure is going to hold the, the pointer to it, you can't see it from the host. So even if it changes name back, you don't know it. But what happens if I destroy the two jails and each one contained an interface named ETH0? You don't get the other side of E pair inside the host. So you cannot reference not. it. But if the jail gets destroyed, its interfaces revert to the parent network stack slash jail. And the name, the name is only local inside the jail. Yes. The renamed is only inside the jail. Yeah, that's what Goran was saying. Yeah, yeah, that, that, well, that's, that, yeah I, that's correct. What I actually do, the, the last line in my exact dot stop is destroying ETH0. So I destroy it before the, the jail is, is destroyed. So that is an interesting point. That's something when you are hosting other people's jails, you can't rely on. Um, um, you have to assume that either they're incompetent or toxic and they're out to get you. So you have to do that cleanup outside. Yeah. Yeah, but um, for example, tracking which jail and interface was returned from would be interesting. <laughs> All if you do it all info, dynamically. Uh, so yes, I started so, even a patch to, to dynamically assign E pairs and yes. without the, the configuration in kernel for the running jails, it's it's a disaster. I don't, I don't want that patch and I wrote it. So it, <laughs> it's, it's disaster. Exactly. If you destroy the jail and you want to destroy its E pair, pairs. So you have at least one pair of E pair, an A and a B side, and you put the B side into the jail, and you shut down the jail. 
EPAM may be a special case if you destroy the host side of the tunnel, uh, of the crossover cable, the other one just gets destroyed as well. So EPAM may be the only type of interface which provides a solution right now. But if I, for example, pass through a virtual function on a network card, I have a nice modern NIC, uh, I have enough virtual functions available in VSEC and I pass one to each jail and I get it back. How do I know which interface, if I stop two jails, which one came from which jail and which one to destroy or to properly reset so that this virtual function can be reallocated to the next dynamically started jail. If you're going full API everything. Uh, while I agree, I think it's one of the not edge cases, but lesser used configurations that you're describing. Yes, so, it's definitely uh, a niche not, case. Yeah, I, I'm not saying it's not important, just that it's so niche, I didn't think about it. And uh, uh, Michael, the, the or Shogbo, if I'm reading right, that's actually where I learned about the Envy list and that they can be used uh, in a kernel also because I was afraid they can't because when you read the man page, there is a dash L N V and I was like, oh my God, it's only use mm -hmm. uh, user space and I will have to do it. It's already whatnot. used in multiple places uh, in the kernel. Mm -hmm. As an alternative to ever more iOctets. And especially, it's a lot better for handling more than one level of nesting, uh, which we see, for example, with the jail set right now is that you have a, again an IO vector of strings or pairs of strings, which is just okay enough for one level of nesting key to value in the scope of this jail but it doesn't support at this level multiple jails the question is does the schema really after the config has been passed is this structure still relevant or do we end up with what is essentially a flat key value namespace per jail, which is at least from the kernel's point of view or from what the kernel's point of view should be. Or should the kernel really have to deal with more, more than one layer of nesting per jail? We really don't want nested stuff in, in, in kernels. It just makes life more complicated. So exactly, I expect a some pushback. Is, is an array or an array of pointers, and you can just walk them. And a nested structure is the recipe for, um, you might as well import libxml and be done with it. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, have you what? said geom? We're ne Somebody said nested, and that brought me to the front because I use <laughs> nested jails. Yeah, it's so not. What? It's not about nested jails. It's about nested configuration parameters. Yep. yep. Yeah. It's okay. We can still we we can still have nested jails. We want the nested jails. The pro the question I was asking is, if the nesting which you want to have in your configuration files for human and machine consumption should be preserved, or if it's okay to expand this as part of parsing the configuration into a flat key value list per jail. I, I think the latter, this is sort of the zones thinking where you import the config at the beginning from, from config files or from command line parameters, mm -hmm. whatever. And then you hand it over to the kernel and say, give me one of these. And it goes, that's fine. You have one, but you don't get to fiddle with it. It's mine. And from that point on, the kernel mm -hmm. owns that data structure. And if you want to know about it, you have to request it, which is fine. That's that's much that's better fine. than our current state. I think that's right. So can any one of the old Solaris uh, zones users explain to a poor little FreeBSD user um, 
what in your opinion did free uh, did Solaris jails get right that's missing from FreeBSD jails? What are you missing these days in FreeBSD uh, compared to Solaris? Or before we go there, have we finished talking about the point we were trying to make before? <laughs> are we are are, are we sw swaying too far from them? What we're trying to do? Dan, thank you for for anchoring us, and I think it boils down that to us defining the UCL schema that we would like, and before that, probably an example. I'll put that in the notes as something actionable to find an UCL schema and an example. Um, what you may be able to do right now would be a Lua tool to yeah. convert yeah. a UCL configuration to jail.conf. Even if the resulting jail.conf is ugly and contains lots of duplication. Maybe that's not what we want. Oh, or um, uh, let me be more precise. Maybe that's not the order of things we want. Uh, if we mm -hmm. have um, Envy list in the jail conf already implemented and we add a uh, UCL, then the jail utility is going to be bilingual in design and that can be used to, to switch the uh, between the two configs, between the two formats. Um, I kind of get the impression that there's still confusion about what NVList is and which role it can fulfill. NVList should never be a user-facing thing. Yeah, you don't see it's it. It's an in-memory yeah. representation of nestable data including, and that's what makes it so much more powerful than uh, YAML or um, JSON for this, or even message pack and other encodings, is that it knows that it's in, on a single Unix box. And because of that, it gets to use Unix sockets and can pass your normal JSON-like data types or of arrays and hash maps of things and it can one of the types it supports is a file descriptor or array of file descriptors which you can send over a unix socket and it keeps track of which file descriptor goes into which position in your, your nested structure and all of this works across both uh, address spaces in user space and between user land and kernel and back again. One thing to watch out for is that libucl, uh, sorry, libnvlist takes control of a thread while sending or receiving an nvlist. So it doesn't play nice with uh, event loops because it blocks on the socket if the other side doesn't provide any everything at once. That's so true, but that's we, we are still example for Beehive, where you either have to start a, if you want to use it for Beehive if management to send some kind of out of band messages like shutdown cleanly, uh, shutdown hard. Now uh, over a socket, that's a very simple message. But if you think about things like um, writing down out a snapshot of the whole jail that's going to take a while. And because of that, you have to fork off a f or either a child process or start a new thread to handle the potentially blocking socket IO. Well, we're still it. not, sorry, we're still not planning any sockets. So uh, I'm not saying there's not going to be one. Uh, because I can imagine jail D, let's call it that way, mm -hmm. that sits down and parses all the config and 
uses um, uh, envylist to cache it mm -hmm. in the memory so it doesn't have to parse yeah. it all the time. And when you're doing something, you're actually telling JLD to, to do it for you over a socket. That, that would be and, a good way of uh, exposing jails to non root users as well, for example, for CI pipelines. A few years back, I even applied for a European fund to implement that for CBSD. Unfortunately, they were less than nice. Mm -hmm. uh, so it didn't happen. Uh, yeah. But yes, I spent a lot of days thinking about just that. And I didn't know about the um, envy list. So my implementation was terrible. What I was sending over the wire was tremendously terrible. Uh, looking a few years back now to, to the past. Uh, but yes, I, I do agree uh, on that. I just think we have jail utility and the mm -hmm. uh, kernel structure to deal with first and one that's in place, nope. it's gonna be much, much easier for I, a daemon to be implemented. And I, I just, disagree. I just wanna, I, 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 one thing I wanna point out here is, unfortunately, Igor was not able to join today. Uh, in the Linux world, that's the common way to do that, right? You have the Mobi server and Mobi client. You have the Docker binary, which is a server and a client for some reason. But that's how the, 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 the Linux world container lives. Now, there are obvious reasons for why they did it that way, which is, you know, they don't actually have a container. They just emulate a container and it's easier to do that via daemon. So multiple clients don't mess up things so they can have queues and stuff like that from a programming point of view. But I think it would be good to learn all of the mistakes that Docker and Mobi and such things have done with having a client server model. Uh, I, I personally, I do think it's possible to do the uh, uh, on the 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 the, the non-root jails without the mm -hmm. daemon. But uh, of course, it's not. It it is some good amount of work. But that doesn't mean that you we need a client server model to do that. But it would be very good to go over all the mistakes that the client server has exposed to the uh, into the Linux world. Uh, however, I do have to say one more thing in this, which is something my company has worked on, and we love it very much. Which is we do have a jailer D, you know, mm -hmm. uh, uh, not JLD, but jailer D for our own jailer, and mm -hmm. there is a beauty in it, which is if you like by default we use the Unix sockets. But if you change that to a BSD socket, an INET socket, you can have the jail utility on Mac OS that communicates over the network with the jailer, with the JLD on a free BSD machine. And now you have a client server model around the world. And if you can scale that, you can do that on the whole data center, just like uh, um, Joyent used to do with Triton. Now, I do have to note one more thing because we've done this and we failed at it. We did this multiple times. We are at our third iteration because of this, which is it's a lot simpler to have a jail D that runs the jail management utility than having two separate binaries, if that makes sense, right? So the daemon is just a daemon. It doesn't do the creation and the destruction. It actually just, it's just a wrapper around that. That makes it easier to program and that makes it easier to debug and it's also more secure from a you know fuzzing and testing point of view rather than having the management done by a single demon uh I, I, we do have a lot of experience like i could go literally an hour talking about all the mistakes that we did in the last three years uh but um i brought up yeah of course of course the demon and the, the client server model is a lot more flexible but I, 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 I want to hear, Jan, your perspective, because I, I agree with Goran that we currently have to fix these issues until we get to the client server model. But, but if you think we should not, um, I'm all ears. I disagree that we have to change the kernel ABI before we can touch the configuration format. You don't have to change the system calls or before you get to have a nice configuration format in the parser for it. Uh, it's a bit annoying having to 
take whatever your parser gives you as a nested structure and break it down into what Vercondel understands, but that's what you have to accept if you develop in user space, unless you also have a, a commit bit to the kernel and the consent of the other kernel developers. To, and this is a luxury which only a very few BSD developers enjoy. Almost everyone else without a commit bit to their BSD project or maybe their Solaris fork has to play with the system calls available to them. and doesn't get to just rip out annoying old system calls and replace them with something nicer before they get to start the project of improving the user space configuration format. And VList would be a format which can take that uh, can hold what the parser has found to be the intended state, maybe. But you could take the existing parser and have it output in VList and then have the logic in jail to run the hooks in the right order and to tear down things if you encounter an error along the way. And you could express all of this against the NVList state without changing the system call interface to the kernel. Yes, you have to inspect the NVList again and again, but that's not that slow. And you're really not CPU bound inside the jail command line utility. No. And Everything in particular, else is you don't have to worry about parallelism because the kernel can deal with that for you. Array inside jail eight. So the user space utility. And you could even use NVList to uh, um, run the parser as a child process, for example, and have a one child have a child process return the configuration over a Unix socket. So you would start uh, do Basically, what you could do is you would uh, use um, a socket pair to have a Unix socket as standard I.O. for a child process you would fork off to pass the configuration and it would have to return an NV list over the socket, which is its standard input and standard output. Maybe you want to use another file descriptor, but in theory, you, you could use standard input and output and maybe give it a nice pipe, a standard out, uh, a standard error as well to proxy all of its error messages or something. And then you get a very flexible design where jail would basically be the logic and hopefully one day the state machine, the parser would be a child process which speaks NVList to the state machine and then the state machine would look something like initial state, um, load config, which would spawn the child process to then validate config, followed by a, apply the operations uh, which have been requested in the context of the return configuration. Mm. Yes, it would have some That's overhead, but to how BD works one of today. this is uh, performance critical. Go ahead, Dave. I think, it's, I think it's too early to think about. Someone jump in. <laughs> Go for yeah, it. I was just saying, this is like DevD, where we have um, a, a socket that streams out um, device events, and then there's user land processes that listen on those. Yes. events and do do various things got a similar pattern and for um let him finish let him yeah, finish sorry. go ahead dave oh that was it i'm just saying it's we have the same thing in zfs as well the zfsd does the same thing your disk is right. dead fix it and i think there is a kernel module available as port to add uh, jail related events to uh, yeah. devd so that the dev CTL 
device returns jail events like jail creation and destruction, which would be really valuable to a um, jail demon or even to a jail command wanting to respond to events like if the jail is supposed to run to completion, I want to have my CI pipeline run the CI job in a jail and have the jail command wait until it has finished and return the exit state uh, status code and so on. And that would be nice to do with these kinds of events as well. But you have to be mindful of the limitations of DEFT that it only supports, I think, up to 10 subscribers when it proxies the uh, current There's events. Problem, yeah. And <laughs> it's hard, a hard-coded limit on how many uh, there can be. And you get problems with support for nested jails because uh, the DEFCTL device isn't designed around supporting any kind of nesting and delegation into sub jails. So, but maybe requiring a powerful jail demon to run on the true host and not nested would be acceptable in the beginning. I think it's a bit early to, to think about so many details of the architecture because for start, we don't know if maybe Jamie is going to say, okay, look, it's nice that you're having your own play box, but this is how we're going to do it. This is how the real Unix guys actually do the programming. Uh, and I'm, I'm not trying to say anyone's idea is bad. Uh, I'm trying to say that uh, if you agree, I would reach out to Jamie uh, and have the idea laid out in front of him and say, okay, I'm willing to do the work. If you're willing to, to kind of mentor it, guide me or review it. And if you think it's stupid, okay, what, what's better? Uh, so for example, if there's a JLD, we can do whatever we want. Uh, we can totally ignore other configuration formats than UCL because it's a new binary. We, we don't care about other uh, supporting something called legacy because it never existed for that specific binary. Uh, so what I'm saying is that uh, getting into the details as the the dev d and events i think that's too a bit too early there's a huge universe of things that we could do uh with a different implementation even with the same implementation we can do a bunch of different stuff maybe kq or who knows right but uh, i think Thing that the jail maintainer should speak first before we we do really in depth uh, analysis of what can be done. Has anyone well, worked closely with Jamie? Um, so, so not closely, but I have talked with Bjorn, um, who said, um, "Reach out to Jamie if he doesn't answer. I will help. <laughs> I'll help Bjorn you um, I think." There's two things that come to mind. Firstly, number one, as, a, as an ex-manager, boiling the ocean is always dangerous. And number two, work in open source get projects gets done when people want to do the work. So what I, to me, what looks like the way forward here is we pick some bits that we're going to work on, see how far we get, and then we come back with specific concrete feedback, which is I tried to do this and the kernel sucks. I only want it to do something else because the, 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 the problem from the kernel side is, or from any software side is, someone presents you with an XY problem, it doesn't do what I want, it doesn't work the way I wanted it to. Now, of course it doesn't, but what are you trying to do? And how does that, how does that problem um, eventuate? So for example, me, I have a specific problem. Um, I run enough jails that I run out of IDs um, and I want to make sure I have a UUID. That's a very specific thing. There's more one, one way of fixing that. I need to attach user data that I can rely on 
And I think the best way to do that would be in the kernel. Um, that's another specific thing someone can look at. Um, I guess what I'm saying is, I don't see why, Goran, you shouldn't start digging into the kernel side of things and getting your head around it at the same time as other people press ahead on um, understanding what the user space side would look at, um, how far um, how, how far can we get with something that uses UCL today and tries to do what a jail conf would do, what specific problems do we encounter? Um, and I think that'd be pretty good. I think we'll get a long way with that. Um, so for example, I've been trying that the last week and one of the things I ran into is that um, I'm used to being able to include any sort of Lua library I want, but when you're using Flua on the kernel side, um, that's not possible, or at least I don't yet know how to do that. Um, that's a specific actionable thing I can go. I need a I need a, a Lua Unix socket library. Um, do we add one, um, or do we port the Flua part to user land so that I can do all of that there in a normal uh, a normal port? Yeah. Well, I mean, I just, I was just able to parse a jl.ucl, sorry, I didn't use the conf and uh, get all the values. And now I just need to run the jl attach and the jl create things. And that should be pretty that simple at this point. And, yeah, did you, uh, did you see my little gift from the other day, creating a bazillion jails? It's super easy in Lua. Yes, yes, it is. The jail part is the parsing part is a bit hard for me because I don't know what the functions are and uh, uh, mapping the uh, the C functions to the OOP style of Lua is kind of new to me. But uh, the source code is pretty is pretty cl clean. It's in contrib uh, lib ucl Lua directory and uh, they do have some good examples in there. Uh, so yeah, I think I think this Lua prototype could be very interesting to be able to do something like that. It also can understand very good environment variables and that could yeah. be good, which uh, one of the problems, Jan, that we talked about last week, which is, uh, this is a good example, by the way, let's say you have um, Etsy, let's say you have exec pre-start instead of a command, let's say you have it set to a, um, a script like you know prestart.sh right mm -hmm. but th that prestart.sh from my experience is not aware of the jail environment variables like what's the name uh did we yeah. define any other you know stuff like that That's but with a really the... annoying problem and it would be nice if the jail command passed a set of yes well-known uh environment variables mm -hmm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Exactly yeah. like we use in jail.conf, right? But in case of this UCL thing, it's actually becoming a lot easier. It's like, okay, iterate over what no. I have in the table and just export them as environment variables. It, and no. It isn't. Oh, really? Have you tried it? It isn't because like... it's the same problem, just maybe phrased through a slightly or maybe even a lot nicer API. But it's still the jail command has to know these key, these verbal bindings you want to inherit to the child process running as hook and whether it was passed from the existing jail.com format um, no, is known at runtime through, let's say, the jail ID of the running jail. This is something I would really like to have uh, because jail IDs normally aren't reused. So it's a good way to securely reference the jail uh, and avoid the problem of potentially having two other kinds of scripts running at the same time, trying to fight over the same jail name. And if I have the jail ID available in my hook, then at least I know that this isn't happening. So let's say I want to have the JAID environment variable set to the integer number. Represent the 32 bit integer representing the jail at runtime. This is something which would not be found normally in the configuration format, neither in UCL nor in the existing one, because it's inherently stayed only available at runtime. Changing the text format on disk doesn't change a thing, jail, the command line utility has to pass this state along. 
buttons because otherwise your hooks get long and it's no longer a one-liner you write in the configuration file, but it's an invocation to a convoluted script using JLS queries to find out what it needs to know and inspecting the runtime state again and again, it gets more racy and so on. But the config file change to UCL may make it possible to use another copy of the libucl parser, because as soon as you have your own hooks and libucl is part of base, then your out of base uh, hook can't access this version of UCL, which may have, it shouldn't have, but may have a different feature set mm -hmm. or a different default behavior for some configurable feature. And then the libucl, you may have found it imports our packages. So you don't want that. Someone has to repass the configuration, no matter the format or even worse, support both formats in each hook. Uh, users will rightfully uh, scoff at you and keep going. So this is a different problem to solve. And yes, providing useful environment variables, preferably under a prefix like jail underscore so that you don't mess up other environment variables. It's a very good idea so that you have jail underscore jit, jail underscore name and so on. And you no longer have to look it up in your, because I do have jails, which certainly I can't share right now, but which do have hooks which run JLS to get access to the jail configuration. And again, if you want to access this from a short um, one-liner hook, uh, it has to be broken down into a flat and environment variable namespace accessible to simple shell scripting. And it's so mm -hmm. probably better to have the jail command do the hard work and maybe expose multiple views at the data so that it's easy to access from a shell script. For example, that if you have an array, you would have one variable containing all the possible variable names, and then you can easily loop over it even in bin sh, and you don't need to force users to use the shell with native array support or deal with splitting and so on, because shell scripting gets messy quickly. So we're at two That's hours. Cool. Do we have actionable takeaways? Uh, yes, yes. So in, until next week, I will write a prototype of libucl with uh, the jail syscall and try to emulate what the jail utility is doing right now. So basically, instead of having jail.conf, I'll have libucl and see where we go from there. Um, uh, that would be my starting point, just to see what can we get, kind of. And Uncle Dave suggested that he can help me as well, since he does know Lua. Um, that's my number one. Number two, Goran, do you think we should continue with your patch regardless of all of these discussion? Well, to, to kind of answer a rhetorical question while I'm hung up on jail, um, my idea was to improve the user land in base yes. uh, as much as I can without touching the kernel. Yes. So that's but, why I said the, the jail should be improved. But maybe if we choose to go with uh, uh, jail D, uh, jail utility as it is should stay as it is. Because this is, will be a clean sheet uh, to start with, and we can have just analyst UCL and uh, different kind of communication with the kernel in the future. So unless anyway, you expect buy-in from kernel developers comfortable committing their time and touching the jail kernel code. And yeah, 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 changing uh, by the way, the 
interface way, between jails just, and... Just, Jan, I wanted to point out that we have a very weird issue here. We have people like me and Dave and Goran, like we mm. are willing to work even on the kernel mm. as long as someone is willing to guide us. Like, tell yes. me where to look at. If you tell me where to look at, I'll do the rest. Like, I will dedicate, but we will dedicate our what own. What I don't there. understand is why you're willing to change the kernel in such a um, drastic way? place, a code with place dealing with security and access control and validation littered with go-tos, but are unwilling to uh, look at libjail available to C and languages capable of interfacing with C in user space already. So why want, do you want to change the kernel interface before the user space is really at a point where it could make use of this? But I said literally the other way around. User space first, kernel later. Yes, but you kind of... So there is a lib jail as part of base, which helps you interface with the existing jail system calls. Yes. You don't have to write directly against the system calls. You can write against lib jail. Yes, it's a flexible uh, space. Not as I nice didn't as it would be. Hmm? That wasn't my attention. I mean, hmm? I literally intend to use leap jail all the way just have the envy list as a starting point mm -hmm. either in a new binary or in an existing one but i think somebody from jail let's say commit bit uh, mm -hmm. gang should say what's the appropriate approach here because but i really don't have experience with it i can uh, I don't even need so much guidance on uh, what to use. I can manage that if you give me enough time. Uh, as in, uh, with enough time and enough monkeys, they will write the Shakespeare, right? And I, I'm pretty stubborn. So I will figure it out. What, what I need to, for example... Uh, Chris Provost, who is maintaining PF, has a list of wishes that he would mm -hmm. wish it's implemented in PF. And if you ask him, which I did, hey, how can I contribute to PF? Okay, here's a list. Take something of it. J just take one item, start working on it, and let's communicate on how to do it or what's good or bad or what I've tried or what you shouldn't and so on. Uh, so when I say I want to contact Jamie, it's to avoid doing something that he knows is a dead end or a bad thing to do for, I don't know, maybe even non-technical reasons. I, I, I'm not the one to judge. Or is working on something already. Or, yeah, uh, he can hook me up with people who are already working on it and we don't know about it. Cool. So I think that the, the question we started off there was, um, have we got actionable stuff to go away with? And I can't oh, find yeah. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, my actionable is to ask about the the parsing config uh, to, to ask Jamie about parsing config uh, review. Maybe it shouldn't be done that way. I don't see it as a polar. I see it being there before I even touch the code. So maybe I didn't do it, but uh, as whatever maintainer says goes. Uh, and the second thing I want to discuss with him, well, obviously I want to ask him to join the meetings, uh, but the second thing I want to ask him is, hey, we have a bunch of ideas how to improve at least user space jails, uh, how, the, how to brainstorm with him in the best way, maybe, I don't know where he's working. I mean, where he's living uh, time zone wise. So maybe the, these meetings are not good. 
uh, I don't know. But whatever he says, I would like to discuss with him and uh, uh, have just the at least go no go from him on on something that I would like to explore or implement. Sorry for the long answer. <laughs> Not at all. Yeah. Oh, sorry to to uh, answer the question about detracing jail. Uh, I started using Dtrace, was it two, three weeks ago? I don't know. And it's for a completely different thing. It's for aligning block sizes of NFS, iSCSI, and ZFS. Uh, it's going to be a blog post about it by a company I work for. And I'm going to be really, really loud about it. So I can't it's wait. Not it's not a secret, uh, but yeah, uh, you will hear it, hear about it. Uh, the reason I wrote it is because I wish I could read something like that before I started that ticket. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely it's gonna be shared. Uh, I wanna be famous like Shakira. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Speaking of which, uh, since Dan is also here, uh, we, I mean, people are still asking about the fact that with jail.conf.d, we're not able to start all the jails. I and mean, there's my patch, there's your patch, and both of them have polar violations. And I mean, I obviously don't want, I don't think it's worth it mm -hmm. to sit down and write the goddamn parser to have local and global scopes. It's going to be a nightmare. Uh, Dan, from your point of view, do you think it's okay if we merge the current patch? If we merge the current patch that Goran has with just notifying the users that yo, this is going to be breaking changes, or or should we or um, should we just not do that? How about in URC dot verbal like jail uh, auto discover or auto start or something that or, would break the change? No, no. Basically, right now, if you have multiple files, you have to list the jails. Yes. In, and the yes. other problem is that you have to tell the jail command which jail.conf you have to, yes. it has to use to know about, for example, yes. the mount points belonging to the jail. Yes. Because if you stop the jail with the global jail.conf and the per jail jail.conf defines some mount points, stopping yes. it won't, and this gets, then prevents restarting the jail because the uh, device is still mounted and yes. it's a mess right now. Yes. So Jan, there are two patches, both of them achieving the same thing with different ways. Uh, mm -hmm. The one that Goran wrote is actually, mod he modified the jail utility to parse all of the locations. Mm -hmm. So jail.conf, uh, jail.conf.d contents with .conf and jail.something.conf, right? That's yes. one way. Uh, th there's also the one that I did, which is really ugly, but it does actually work, yep. which I cat right. all the files and I yep. pipe them to the jail utility with dash f dash, because you can yes. give the jail um, The thing so, <laughs> yeah. is no, it do that doesn't work because it does it doesn't work because it's different from what happens right now. If you have global configuration, so basically the wildcard configuration per jail.conf, because right now the startup script would pass only the per, if you have a list of jails to start, each jail would get started with its config file and you could have conflicting global jail variables. And I suspect there are other okay. production users out there, those setup would break if you do that. And um, you could even have users putting their configuration files somewhere else and using their own startup scripts, running jail as it is right now and passing it a jail.conf and a jail name as part of, for example, their Ansible worlds and they may put it somewhere else. Uh, or uh, some other configuration manager by, by the way, the RC scripts. 
making so okay so making a scoped making a scoped global variables mm -hmm. so we uh, the one that you said for production users who have that issue so the mm -hmm. only reason by the way the only reason why we're doing this is mm -hmm. because of a parameter called depend right so mm -hmm. we have to parse all the configuration to know if mm -hmm. a jail depends right so yes. uh in the rcd jail there is a function, an internal function, which is called uh, parse options, which will actually, it's a jail code, sorry, it's a shell code that parses all of the options. One of the ways for me to do this is if there is depend, add the depend to the pipe, otherwise continue as is it this, you would. Yeah. Where is this shell code? Is it in the jlrc script? Yes. Oh, that explains why I haven't found it in etc. Oh. Uh, yeah, it's it's in it's in it's okay. In, uh, it's in OCD jail. Does so it even support the plus uh, equals syntax? Yes, it absolutely works. It works very beautifully. It's very simple. It's I use it a lot. It's nice. So one of the ways for me to solve the problem. <laughs> So one of the so, way, and I and it's written in pure shell, by the way. So yeah. one of the ways it is, I can use that thing, so mm -hmm. I can have a scope of variables. The only problem is, the only problem is, um, I have, I have to use dash f dash. I have to use std input, which is not a beautiful solution, but it's a good solution. Like it does work, yeah. you know. And uh, <sighs> it, it, the users are not going to see the difference unless they have an error in the in their jail so if so they have an right error in now, the, yeah. Uh, one of the actual things you could take away from it if you want to touch it would be to replace the shell script with a new flag to the jail command to return just what this. Basically return the shell code to be sourced by the RC script. Return, go so again. Basically return, return so the jail outputs just like SSH agent that it returns something you can evil. Uh, yes, exactly. Okay, yeah, that, that's very easy because we already have something called jail config, mm -hmm. which will tell you, uh, yeah. you know, uh, the, the config file for foo dot, for, for the jail foo is and in then, this file and, and it will print an eval. Yeah, it's absolutely doable, of course. Exactly. Some, if it out adding support for to the jail command to output what this shell code does just the assignments, which should I'm, be I'm done. so sorry. That, that does exist right now. That mm -hmm. does exist right now. It's the dash E flag. Mm -hmm. Do you have so a link to that the, code you're talking about? Um, um, well, there's no... Sorry, or Michael. Dash E does this already? Just trying to follow yes, along with the, the rest dash of Dash E like... does this already. Yes, Dash E does this already. You can do jail dash E and say new line and then say dash F, specify config file. It will print it in eval format. So that's absolutely doable right now. Uh, I, I, by the way, if we don't do any of these major changes that we're talking about, like the libucl and the GLD, et cetera, there is a lot of work that can be improved without the users, without the production users even noticing a change, like internally. Uh, it's just that it's, it's a lot more work than, yeah, like I could even either spend a week doing these changes or spending a week on doing the prototype. You see, it's, 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 it's a typical startup problem. But yeah, it's doable. And yeah, Sian, uh, you couldn't find it. It's because it's in shell inside the RCD jail. Um, I found and it. Um, good. I've grabbed the normal support shell script, uh, shell code I know about, and I assumed there, there would be a parser because. There may it used to be two jail scripts, but yeah, yeah, it's called parse options. It's called parse I options. found it and yeah, yeah. it's in etcrc.dj and it's long and yeah, it's everything that's wrong with shell. Yeah, shell runs the I'm world. Running. I'm running. I might have a homework for you, yes, and sir. I hate doing that, uh, okay. but. You mentioned on, I think, Mastodon that you're researching how to test and how to write tests. Yes. So I'm thinking uh, if you and Dave write the uh, Flua parser 
can it be used later as a test? Can, can it be added to the uh, QA or ATF, A AFT, how it's called? ATF, or yes. it has to be shell and Python? Uh, not necessarily. So uh, here's what I learned so far. If anyone, uh, it's, a, it's ATF, Michael. Yeah, it's not AFT. Yeah, it's ATF. Uh, I, I think what I learned, so what my original goal was to write tests for Jailer. So, you know, you can do make test and it will run test. So it will, you know, improve the development cycle a lot. So here's some of the things that I learned, but I, I prefer if, if JIMMV joins us one day because he's the author of both ATF oh, and, and, and yeah and and QA and he's the one who integrated it initially with FreeBSD. So one of the ways that I'm testing right now is is uh, telling Oops. QA to execute these commands and expect the exit code zero. And since you know since oh. Jailer returns the appropriate exit codes, I know that it's working. Sometimes I'm like expect the code non-zero. And if it's non-zero, then return zero. Because like, okay, I want this test to fail. Uh, again, I'm very new in this QA world. So it's, it's very, very interesting. Um, and uh, it has an interface with shell, as in the shell programming language. So you can say there should be a function named this that should at some point in its life return this. And if there is a point in its life where it doesn't return that, it will throw an error. So it can parse shell programs. It can also parse C and C++ programs. It does not have a parser for Lua programs, but in case of Lua, we uh, most of the FreeBSD Lua utilities have something called a test.lua. Which is, which is a, a test that is written in Lua that tests the other Lua code. So we can do that as well. Uh, I, I, I think we should do both. We should do from a command line execution to make sure that the, uh, I, I don't want to say the jail, let's, let's call it the LAIL utility, the Lua jail, the LAIL utility works uh, from a shell point of view and also a Lua test to make sure that the code inside of it also works. So we would have a unit test as well as an integration test. And, mm -hmm. uh, but again, um, um, I've never written code, code testing in my life. That's why I don't ship a lot to production. So, uh, we do, we, it would be nice if we have D Dave, what's your experience? Do you have any experience in, in, in testing? Yes, but not in this sort of area, more in the, um, Alex, the sort of world, yeah, yeah, yeah. Elixir testing is a lot I, better. I mean, come on, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't the Kiwa stuff that we have in, in um, at FreeBSD. No, I looked at that once in ATF and went, Oh my god, not for me. Um, but the, there, um, I have a, a link somewhere of um, Lua tests related to jails. Um, and to me, that looks actually a really nice way of doing stuff for doing tests. Uh, it's always good, especially when we start looking at things like um, nested jails, um, these various variables that need to over, 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 um, overwrite or inherit. Um, tests are really good for that. For going, did we, did we preserve the breaks? I, I think the wildcard jail stuff is a great example of something that seemed like a good idea at the time, and maybe it's better to push that complexity to the user and say, if you really need templated jails, then there are tools to do that. Yeah. To do templates. Anyway. I, th I think the idea of a test suite is excellent. <laughs> someone, someone else should do that. I mean, someone should do that. <laughs> yeah. I was, I was thinking along the lines, if you create a proof of concept and we create a project, d d don't throw away proof of concept. It can be, ideally, it can be changed a little bit to become a test. Um, Michael, there has to be a space uh, between the, uh, jump because in and otherwise you're using yeah, you know the best. empty separator. Okay. Yeah, just jump in, jump in, do it. But uh, as far as I can tell, it doesn't really handle multi-value things well because it's just comma separating them. And I haven't checked what it if it handles oh, all really? the corner cases around shell quoting correctly or at all. 
Oh, I have a question for whoever used the pen in a jail. Uh, can you have multiple jails declared with a plus equal syntax? I know oh, they can oh, be oh, depend. Sure. I've Sorry? never tried it, but. Uh, yes, that, yes. That's... So, sorry, I shouted. Uh, sure yes. I only used the. I only used the the comma, so it's a, uh, it's a uh, maybe the same to the parser if he sees the comma and if there is a semicolon. plus equal syntax. Yeah, the se it's 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 going to convert it to either a comma or a semicolon at the end, and it understands both the comma and the semicolon as the same thing, which is like okay, object, you know, number zero, number one, number two, uh, according to the GL parser, and so, yeah, it, it it works the same way. You can have a global depend that will never work right now, <laughs> <laughs> and then have you know depend clause equals in every other GL well, and uh, well. Why wouldn't it, it never work? What happens if a jail depends on itself? Oh, that's interesting. I'm, tra I'm trying to, to continue the that, joke. I we, do have that. <laughs> so, yeah, because yeah, I do uh, have a patch. But you, to, you're to be going honest, to create a test case for that, right, Ryan? <laughs> good one, good one. Um, I was asked a question. I never answered it. Should we merge it? So we merge it. That's that's the question. The, Goran's the, patch, you mean? The, uh, either the my shell version or Goran's uh, mm. C version. If if uh, by the way, Goran, if 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 we think that we should have a scoped variables, I'm totally okay with doing that on the shell. Again, my my only ugly point is going to be dash f dash. So std inputs, mm. uh, which one... unless a user yes, go on. If one question which hasn't been answered so far, and that is. Uh, in your example, you used uh, dollar $ID equals instead of just ID equals. Does the parser allow both and doesn't care, or is there a, a difference between the two? They are different. So, so uh, for example, if you have something called path, which is something that you have to define, the path, you just say path equals. A dollar sign anything is an internal variable. So, for example, you can have dollar sign... Uh, I know a parent, for example, dollar sign parent equals to something, and you can use that dollar sign parent variable in other parts of the configuration. Mm -hmm. One of the common ways that me and Goran do this is we have dollar sign ID uh, equals to an integer one, two, three, four, etc., okay. and then we use that for generating uh, the the e pairs. So we would never have an mm -hmm. e pair conflict. Right, so that, that okay. that's the dollar sign. It is documented in in the jail.conf man page on how the parser uh, expects the the dollar sign variable and the regular variable. The regular variable is for the jail itself, and dollar sign variable is for the configuration file variable. I've only used it to expand the regular variables in others, like oh. expanding the jail name into the path. Yes, yes, yes. Well, you can have it randomly. It. Yeah, you can have it randomly. Okay. One of the ways that I do this, for example, is I have dollar sign bridge equals to something. Mm -hmm. And then exactly. bridge could be an actual bridge or it could be an LO0. Like, I don't care. I just know that whatever mm -hmm. I'm attaching to is called dollar sign bridge. And then I do the, the rest in other parts. So, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So we could use an example, uh, an example use of that as part of the example section in jail.com. <laughs> Yeah. Signing to such a variable and using it. Um, M Michael, sorry, I just saw this. If we are okay to post the videos to BeehiveCon, uh, personally, I don't care as long as it's somewhere. But does anyone mm -hmm. think that we should uh, post it there or should we create a new YouTube channel or something? Uh, I see no value can... in creating a new one. You know, it's like centralized at this point. Yeah, yeah we can start with it and. And if we riot later, we can we can break exactly. free. Yeah, my workflow allows for this, and I can have it up possibly today if I can get a KVM issue working. <laughs> um, like and my, 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 Michael, who owns the channel? Who, who's who's I do. Own? Okay, That's it's just perfect. Yeah. Me doing my thing. It was, it came out of obviously BeehiveCon, but it's like, well, yeah. any 
any non-Linux virtualization and containment topics are fair game in my book. <clears throat> um, if it's that, not obvious. That sounds fair. It would be um, nice if you collected them in a, a playlist of their own. Uh, if if playlists are easy to create, absolutely, sure. Um, and the, the what, interface has gotten much better over the years. What, one way also to do this is, uh, and I'm not sure how YouTube is doing their own thing these days because it changes every goddamn year. Uh, you could uh, you could delegate the account as well. So you know you could right. set me or someone else as a, mm -hmm. as a manager. So we do all of that heavy work. You only just do the upload, and we will do the descriptions, blah blah blah, stuff like that. For example, my team is always ready, just like Aram did today, to uh, cool. write show yeah. notes. Write show notes. Like this is when we started talking about this, etc. Et Luckily, they let you clone the description from an existing video. So I just change the date, punch go, and wait for it to upload <laughs> and parse. And it's, it's gotten much, much better. But a similar question about that uh, um, help came up from Jan about he just sort of squatted on the FreeBSD Jails channel such that, hey, Anthony, do you want to be named as a a manager of that, a admin, or what do they call them? A what the term is for IRC? Uh, oh, you oh, suddenly owner. everyone's in charge. I get it. Oh, yeah, there you go. Yeah, uh, exactly. Right now, everyone's everyone's a winner. I was asked basically uh, if I know anything about the channel, and it turned out that because I run my own IRC uh, Quasal proxy. Uh, that I was the last one standing with my IRC client, so I inherited op by default. And the chat <laughs> registered is despite being under the FreeBSD namespace prefix. And I found out that, yeah, okay, I can just lay claim to it uh, and register the channel. So if anyone objects to me being a bit presumptuous of claiming this channel, I asked in the FreeBSD-IRC channel and announced it that I've done it and nobody uh, whipped off my head or something like that. So and uh, if, if right. anything I've done, uh, you can either talk to me or to the uh, do documented contact persons in the uh, FreeBSD Wiki. Wiki for the IRC channels. And just uh, for basically shit and giggles, uh, I gave up to anyone idling in this uh, so far undocumented channel who remembered that there used to be such a channel in Freenode. Uh, Thanks for doing that. Thank you very much. If anyone wants to look out in case we ever get a spam or other abuse problem, uh, even better if this person is in a different time zone than Europe that would help but otherwise I would just keep it as is but if anyone wants to have me delegate that I'm open to it sounds perfect cool. uh, speaking of which uh, we also did push it to free PSD meetings who suggested that oh Igor right he suggested that we did also push there and uh, someone just came up with a comment uh, in a review, by the way, like literally half an hour ago, which is good, I, which means it's active. Uh, I will ask to get a commit bit on that repository because we will be committing every every week for the jail call as well as the beehive call is, is it's supposed to go there for future archeologists. We have a this lot of actionable takeaways. This is nice. Oh, we can boil the ocean, but no, little tiny things that will, you know, help at least prep for the next meeting is, is great. Uh, and Dan's question still stands. Is any of the, uh, those patches ready yet or simply we're all thinking about what's been discussed? I, I, I suggest that let's, um, let's think about it for a week. I, th I think that's the right answer is let's think about it for just this week. And maybe by next week we will have an answer either from me or Goran. I will I will try to modify my code to have at least the scoped thing, even with the ugly dash f dash, but at least it will be scoped and users will not have destruction and it will fix the dependent issue as well as some of the global issues. 
global configuration issues. So uh, I, I'm, I'm ready to work on that, uh, to, 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 to try it and see what the result is gonna be. Uh, and hopefully by next week, some people can test it. That would be the, the, the nicest way to have, to get, just have some testing. And Dan, thank you for uh, fixing a typo in our repository uh, in Jailer. Yep. I'm like, oh yeah, that's nice. But I don't know English reason, very well. For some reason they just jump out at me. <laughs> hey, I just caught one of yours on the BSD can site, but or the Google Doc, but that's cool. Uh, I'd love to share a quick epiphany. Yes, sir. Which is, and I'm writing up some docs relating to this. I'm I, along with Occam BSD. I'm cutting the OS down. I'm also looking at what in cutting the community down to like the essentials looks like. And <laughs> it occurred to me for reviews and PRs, error reports, issue reports, uh, those little simple reports are a lot like a conference proposal. You need a catchy headline that clearly defines what you wanna do. You need to clearly explain that the, the problem or use case or proposed feature, you wanna show that you've done your homework, that you have a little test case that you can reproduce it and here's how the developer can reproduce it and just sort of wrap it up as a little package and ship it off and the, the, it's not a handbook page, but there's an article on writing uh, PRs, which is good, but not great. I'll, I'll see if it's suitable for uh, improving or writing from scratch, possibly from a vendor perspective. But uh, those, those uh, PRs and reviews need to stand out. They need to get attention. They need to be, I won't say sexy, but they need to be, you know, good. <laughs> Uh, it's busted is not a good problem report. That's all. Um, GitHub helps with that by supporting projects and then allowing them to configure templates for bug yes, reports. They do. That's a good point. Um, and, uh, I, I don't know if Bugzilla has Windows the same feature, that. but... Yep. Um, for the end, I would like to stress out the problems with either implementation of parsing all the files. So my implementation has, we're not even sure if it's polar, but it's really easy to shoot in a foot situation, uh, even if it isn't. Uh, but it gives you ability to work with a jail utility alone. That's kind of neat that the jail utility knows about all the configs. Uh, and we'll uh, report the error lines as they appear. And Tranix implementation makes it easier for scoped global variables to, to be a thing. But once you get an error on line that doesn't exist, it's a black magic. So I don't think we're choosing what's better. I think we're choosing a smaller bullet for the foot. Mm -hmm. uh, so maybe the the... Our thinking if we should merge it or not, or what should we merge or not, should be what hurts less in the long run. And ideally, um, I'm really hoping Jamie is going to be okay with all my suggestions and we start with a clean slate and do everything right. Uh, which would make me Mr. Right. <laughs> but yeah, I, I mean, uh, we as a community, we start from scratch and we use all the modern libraries to, to achieve the same thing. Uh, that would make the debate or the, the um, any kind of question what to merge obsolete because we won't need it anymore. So yeah, maybe the, the, there's a third question, nothing of the above. Um, 
just as a user with no authority whatsoever, uh, I would be against uh, merging the current state of the patch. And I would even be against as long as it breaks existing working configuration against including it by default, but I would be fine with support for auto discovering all uh, configurations because I would really like to use such a feature, but uh, because it changes the behavior and someone may have a configuration which so far is inactive for some really dangerous old service laying around, Enabling it by default by auto discovering it would be uh, rightfully be uh, frowned upon by that poor uh, user. So it would be a good idea to have an option to, with a one line rc.conf change, enable such a feature and maybe warn them that the N plus one major release will enable this by default unless you disable it or something similar to the uh, IPv6 activate all interfaces variable keeps uh, annoying you if you still have it in your configs. <laughs> that this is a deprecated feature and will go away. Or the default behavior will change, but. Yeah, if we're, if we're changing the behavior, we really want to have a switch to enable it. Yes, with and a view it should to be one day making it the default. Um, um, exactly. with, with, with the shell version, I can do that, by the way. Yeah, with the shell version, yes. I can do that. Yeah, so because... someone mentioned that they couldn't because it would break the patch. I, I think that's what was said earlier. I'm not sure, but the Knowing both patches and what they do, I think both can be modified to do that. Uh, that will and give if, you them, sorry. And if we do that for the C version, it would be easy to navigate where's the error, at least. So in, in that particular case and with this little bit of thinking, I think the C version would be better if uh, there is a switch to to enable and disable the, the parsing of everything. Yeah, I, I think like a dash capital F, just like the dash small f would make the most common sense. Uh, I, I will go over your C code. I just hate that whole tail Q stuff that we're using. Oh my God. <laughs> like, oh Who my doesn't? God. <laughs> <laughs> oh my, like, like, why didn't we implement a proper linked list? You know, like, oh my God. And uh, uh, yeah, so no, that's sad. But yeah, okay. How about, how about that makes the most sense? Let's, let's spend the next week trying to make your C patch, which is a lot better than my shell patch, 100%, with a configurable flag that will just, at the end of the day, our C conf is just going to read that and based on it, add or de de delete a flag, it would be easier to not break changes. And maybe, maybe if we get our head around it, we can temporarily have the uh, scoped global variables. For, but for you don't need it. Uh, but you wouldn't need it. You wouldn't need it. At yeah. That point, yes. Yeah, because let's take Jan's uh, example. It has global and local configuration in a file. Yes. And if you parse only that, you don't care. Yes. Yeah, that's that's correct. Oh, yeah. Oh, so we would solve two problems with a single flag. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Let's so, try doing that. So uh, you're obviously more... Uh, uh, um, you read more the, the survey uh, RCD file. So once I finish with the C and adding, let's call it the dash capital F for mm -hmm. like a working version, uh, I will need help because it's a huge yes. service file. It's, yes. I'm really not glad that uh, RCD has something so huge. Uh, none of us are. It, it, what, so, yeah. But yes, it, it, it would be pretty easy. So if we would parse a uh, an RC conf variable, which says, I don't know, jail run all, you know, for example, equals true. And the rest is going to be very easy on the jail conf. Uh, I'm, I'm very sad that I know how RCD jail works. It's, 
it's not very like uh, how is this still working you know? <laughs> yeah yeah it's huge it's really uh, i try to understand the the part with uh the the parameters and i gave up uh, i just okay give me some assembly this makes no sense <laughs> and there are and there are some weird edge cases that I've never seen people who use it on production. For example, there is run parallel parallel jails. Uh, there is also shutdown in reverse order. So these are all very weird variables that uh, not a lot of people use. But uh, Dan, you're the most advanced jail user that I know, by the way, from like the port pop. A fresh post perspective. Have you ever used the shutdown reverse order or the parallel parallel jails? Um, I want the jails shut down in the reverse order they're started because the okay. database server starts first, mm -hmm. and that has to be the last one to be shut down. That's very important. Oh, and interestingly, they are mutually exclusive. So you can either have par parallel start and stop, or or you can have mm -hmm. reverse order. So that that's also something that I I yeah. it took me a I, while to understand. I I I would like to have some parallel start, but that gets complicated. It, I guess if you drew a tree, everything at the same level can start in parallel. So yeah, that would be nice because right now it takes a good length of time to start up the jails, but I got 40 CPUs, so there's no reason why you couldn't start some in parallel. That's a it, neat little math trick. It's also, it also would be very interesting if you, like what, the only thing that comes to my mind is if you have parallel start equals yes, but then you have the dependency trees configured properly with the depend flag. Now, what doesn't depend on anything else will, will, you know, will start by its own and whatever depends on something else will wait until, so that could be a good solve uh, for That's the- That's really cool. Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. right. So, and if, so if, if I don't depend on anything else, I'm, I'm just gonna start and everything that doesn't depend is gonna start, but whoever depends is gonna wait. So now you have parallelization with proper queuing. That would yep. be very cool indeed, yes. We'll um, leave that for a future exercise. Yes, sir. But so, that's really nice. I While talking about fu future, I was thinking uh, one thing the zones could do before jails is run virtual machine inside the jail. Now, if we oh, had a server, if we had a service, uh, now jails can run Beehive, of course. Uh, but if we had, for example, a service that would start a virtual machine, then we would get off with just managing jails and some of them would have beehives in it. Why I'm uh, dreaming about it is then I could have my Linux jail depend on a beehive jail who depends on a native jail. And I could have a graph of what mm. starts when. And it, it's a neat um, thing to think about. Uh, so is it in the Beehive camp, is it even uh, interesting to, to have something like that? Because I would really like one tool to, to start all my Mm, let's call them containers. I don't know how to call them. So that was my key point of, I think, my last BSD can talk, which was that once you jail Beehive, you solve two problems. One, the, the uh, P kill shot in the dark of killing Beehive, so you kill your one single instance as opposed to potentially others. And the other is you can use all your jail management tools with virtual machines in an instant um, overnight. So I, I'm totally all over that. But you you have already lots of beehive specific management tools, so I don't know any for better or for worse. Also, great uh, jail manager, which I was just dying to use on beehive. Your S six work or something else? Yeah. Well, 
ship it. <laughs> so it's all good. And that's why I, I personally blur the lines on Beehive Con for all these topics because they're so interrelated, not to mention ZFS. But go ahead, Jan, you've got some more in the chat there. Yeah, but it's a bit off topic that... Uh, That's for I'm another already, meeting, a demo I'm of already, that as it relates to jail. Yeah, but uh, you, using S6RC, an alternative portable service manager, uh, already starts your services, and it doesn't matter which, by default uh, concurrently, as soon as the de dependencies are satisfied. So uh, that works, but... Uh, but, and are you using that with feature? jail or just beehive uh yes yes so that might be a good demo for a future product production users talk i think for example on Nig, you should give a jailer talk i might give an uh, an occam bsd talk and so a little quick presentation and questions and enlighten mutual enlightenment anyway i threw in a crazy jail definition in the chat earlier where the jail uh, during Restart <clears throat> copies uh, the runtime linker, li the shared libraries, and the single executable using those into the jail. And something like that can be expanded upon a, and somewhere I had a configuration which would first check the read only mounted ZFS data set, make sure that the jail is stopped, then and if the host has a newer version of Arswing, for example, installed, it would go over, um, copy all of this over after mounting the ZFS data set writable, uh, close it up again to make it read only and only then start the jail uh, to have a jail for a single executable. Okay, the uh, advocate role for the uh, past environment variables. Oftentimes the hooks require access to jail configuration parameters. And right now those are hard to access from the hook. The, and some of them can be thrown to race conditions during discovery. And having the jail command, which is responsible for changing this jail state right now, uh, pass those um, state full information to the um, to the hook as environment variables, preferably under a prefix to avoid namespace collisions, would make it a lot easier to keep the hooks short and uh, reliable. Something um, like having access to the jail ID of the jail running or the uh, path of its FS tab. I do or have as to I just out. learned now, access to all of the uh, internal variables starting with a dollar name. Exactly. To be, uh, for example, to create an e pair interface pair, put one end on a bridge, and uh, then only later. So I don't know which would be the perfect hook for it. Probably is it already prepared or is it, would it be pre start? So that before the other half of the interface gets pushed into it and in some way and there we get into the point where you kind of want to have a daemon running because you want to keep this information around so that you know which interface to destroy or uh, just uh, take administratively down once the jail is destroyed. So this state should outlast this, but at least it would be a simple but and already very useful step towards improving the situation for writing hooks. I, I think I think if yeah, if me and Goran are gonna work on the fixing the bugs of what we have already seen on the jail utility, mm -hmm. adding simple things like exporting environment variables yes. is gonna be a lot easier once we and get our head around the utility. Once well, that part of the jail command is as cleaned up as you want it to, adding the support for passing environment variables to uh, hooks should be very little code. Uh, I, I don't want to go to the, the Michael's question to Anthony, which is a good one. Like maybe we should have like uh, a mini talks at the beginning of every call if someone has to show something. 
and it would be also cool to have like these mini call mini talks lightning talks isn't that the term lightning talks. there you go that's yeah one of many yep yeah yeah so we Ignite could like talks, pe yeah. pe people people would be like hey how can i use jailer how can i use cbsd how can i get started with OCAM? and we would have tiny things here and there for people to start playing with it would be a lot more efficient than a conference in the sense that it's going to be weekly and it's going to be uh, good from the sense that if someone is working on a conference, uh, they will have a lot of reference points to go back to. You know, that I, I think this would be good. And Michael, do we have a limitation on the recording hours? Uh, your bladder, your bum getting sore, saddle sore. <laughs> uh, many people have work related limits, but no, not to my knowledge. I understand. Um, Publicly. So Publicly, yeah. uh, this video is gonna beep a lot in this, in these minutes. <laughs> uh, yeah, what I remember. Uh, yeah, the bum and uh, the the thing you have to throw out. Uh, I remember one more problem, and that you cannot um, configure your interface inside the jail one. Uh, the the e pair one you cannot configure it for a DHCP, and I think uh, I don't know. It just doesn't work for I me. I think in recent versions the no jail flag is no longer set in the NetEF and uh, DH client RC scripts. When have you last checked this? Yeah, Dan did that change if I'm not mistaken, and the DH client works fine for me. Okay. It used to be I that the keyword no jail, but now it's no jail vnet because he added a, a special keyword for those which are supported to be uh, supposed to be disabled in uh, j normal jails, but not in vnet enabled jails. So that they is that two different configuration things. So the what is. No jail and no jail VNet are those two distinct. Yes, those are oh, two yeah. distinct keywords uh, okay. recognized by the dependent okay. by the RC uh, in the system or service yeah. manager. I got. I remember adding removing no jail from jail dot r r jail the RC jail RC to d script because you know I, mm -hmm. I use jails and jails. I remember just copying RC dot d script. Uh, to from slash etc to slash us uh, local etc and changing one key or two keywords. Yeah, and not to point out, Dan's change was about running jails inside of jails, and now you can run the jail service inside of jails. And two, mm -hmm. the DHCP service does work in a jail. I do run it yeah. in my house. I actually have a jail named Mecca by your nickname in my house that is running the HCP and it, it does work fine. Yeah. However, no, no, it, yeah, it's, I just use if config, the interface name equals the HCP. Interestingly though, the DHCP and the HCP sync act differently in the jail than on a host, which is- Yes, which, they which... do. And the reason for that is that the jail doesn't have access to the hot plug events from the oh. dev CTL device. So what normally happens if you don't have the sync DHCP, but just DHCP, yeah. is that because the uh, DH client script is set to no start, normally it doesn't get started. What happens is as soon as the NetEF script, set, or by default, depending on the driver, the interface oh. comes up, then a link up event is reported on the dev CTL device, and the default dev D configuration starts the uh, DH client CP script. Client. Oh, so it's now it all dynamically. Uh, it has been that way for a while. You have to oh. do something similar if you want to use rerouting. So I have systems where I don't trust the system console. So I have this very small, unencrypted, basically rented servers as a cheap hosters. And I have an unencrypted small system. And then I reroute into a jelly encrypted file system later on so that because the jelly state uh, so the attached decrypted access to the partitions survives the rerouting i can use it but if the unencrypted system has already consumed the uh, message on the dev ctl uh, device then the dhcp client in the 
host isn't properly started, uh, the proper system isn't really started. So I have to use sync DHCT there. Do, do you think that is possible to solve that problem? Because my problem- Not really, is... unless you want to turn the interface down and up again, I see. which flaps the link and can cause other problems. I see. Um, the better solution would be, but what you could do is on the host, you're in the jail, you have multiple hooks, mm -hmm. something like post start mm -hmm. or something. And that there is a one which gets after the normal start command has finished, which gets run outside of the jail, I think. Yep, yep, yep. And there you could take the other end of the E pair down and up again. Oh. Which, but that at least if there is a DHCP client running, could uh, take care of it. Or you could have your it. own DHCP client or on the host. And that's probably the best way of dealing with it would be some kind of delegation, basically having def D on the host notice the second link state change and then uh, proxy the uh, invocation of the run uh, RC script via JXEC into the jail or something. But for that, you kind of have to know the mapping. And I don't know if the def CTL event contains the name of the VNet instance. Uh -huh. But that would be the, if you can get that from the message, I don't know, you have to, you can just run cut on the var run def d dot pipe to get a log of what happens. And if it reports the right, the VNet instance, you could proxy it. You could probably, maybe you, if DevD is uh, stupid enough not to care about the, the, the DevCTL device node, isn't a device node, you may be able to fake it with a, a FIFO, putting a named FIFO in the, uh, a sum link to one, depending on what you can do. I don't know if you can even put a FIFO in slash dev because the devfs is a special kind of file system, but you can at least put a sum link there and then you could confuse the guest dev D to follow a sum link outside of slash it slash dev to a name FIFO where the proxy would report the event. Then you could actually have the dev D inside the um, guest have it and you could just flood it to all jails. And then the ones which don't have a device of that name would just do nothing. Yeah. But that gets a bit noisy if you have lots of jails. Yeah, that, that does. The, the, the only problem that I'm actually trying to solve here is mm -hmm. a jail doesn't report back that it's alive until the DHCP Did, client either gets an IP or the, does, you know, waiting yeah, for an IP for case, 30 uh, seconds. Unless you expect your jail to do anything reasonable if the DHCP service is unreachable, just use sync DHCP and avoid all of this uh, insanity. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah I, yeah, I think so. You're saying the easiest option would be to, you know, do a down and up at the host level for to the other end of the e-pair. Yeah, it's kind of a running quest. Uh, YouTube congratulates us for... Uh, not getting that, that channel. It's not for the meeting. Come on. Okay. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah. uh, let's uh, wait for Mecca and DCH and uh, Dan to get back to their chairs. Yes. And uh, I let's have our final thoughts and wrap it up and see next see everyone next week. Eh? I I think this was very lovely. So we do have some very good actionable plans, and we will freeze quote unquote freeze the document. I mean this part of the document at this point. Yeah, um, please fix my typos, my yeah. misheard things and acronyms and camel in, case in, and all that nonsense and all the auto corrections. My God, that was a nightmare. Uh, nightmare. On macOS, you can disable this uh, auto correction and system. That's uh, a Google thing. Settings. No, no. It's several things, but uh, macOS in. It's great when like it works. It's terrible when it doesn't. Four years ago, started auto correcting you by default in almost all text input fields. It will correct your passwords. Yeah, Apple went No, 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 not your passwords. Oh, no, I've not put it. If someone put, I've seen a client put a password in a doc and it fixes it for him. Like, no, no, no. 
<laughs> and it's also annoying, especially if you're using two languages uh, interleaved. Yep. Oh, I know that pain. And it's suddenly... Um, Same here. I, I just realized everyone in this call is multilingual. I have to confirm with uh, Dan, but yeah, Latvian here. Obviously English, everyone. Um, you got your Deutsch, you got your... Uh, Serbian, I trust, is the, its yeah. own fork of Slavic languages. Uh, no, it's similar. Uh, I mean, uh, sure. I don't know why we have a different language between Serbia and I think Slovakia. There was a girl uh, sitting next to me in a car. She called her boyfriend and they're uh, Slovakian and they talk and I said, I understood everything. Well, that's, that's, I mean, I, 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 lately I learned that Armenian has seven keyboard layouts. You thought US and Dvorak was a thing. We have seven keyboard Good layouts. And interestingly, they are all bad. <laughs> all of them are the all quirky. keyboard layouts are bad. Sorry yeah. to burst your body. I, I use the ENDK one, the fake Euro layout. Um, mm. Yeah. But, uh, I'll, I'll send a link to it um, on um, on Meston later. I have had the pleasure of um, being amazed with languages, um, watching a film that's in um, Yiddish and realizing I can understand most of it because it's quite close to German. And then wow. um, watching um, a TV series in Luxembourgish, which is this bizarre mix of sort of a Flemish German French language, but every person is a slightly different dialect depending on where they grew up in Luxembourg, and mm -hmm. realizing that I can understand about 70% of it so long as I just go with the flow. It's one of those things, if you had a couple of beers, it's much easier to understand um, because people switch between German and French and whatever the other sort of component is, depending on, yeah, just, just their mood. It's, 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 Europe is crazy. Yeah, well. There's a difference between if some movie has some splattering of Jewish words or even Jewish sentences in there and someone really speaking it, because even as a German native speaker, I, I had real problems following along. My, 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 my German is limited. I have nothing to do. Yeah. <laughs> so. Well, we lost Dan, it looks like. I am happy to okay. stick around for a little bit, but let's call it at just about about three minutes after three hours. With these much actionable items, I think we're good for the week. And this was a very good developer call. Like we did talk mostly about development stuff, which is dope. Awesome. Is this uh, call also supposed to alternate between a developer and... Loosely, yes. Uh, uh, that's been proposed. Yeah. Um, I think that apply that would apply most to little demos. Maybe on the production user calls, we we lead with the ten to fifteen minute presentation demo. Although a developer may equally want to do that. Um, yeah, demo the prototype, right? I suspect if we get Jamie involved, uh, his time might be limited, such that that's also the key reason that the beehive calls have a developer call it's like okay let's jump into the key topics that might get banged out in 15 minutes and everyone vanishes back to their day jobs whereas yeah. here we're going a little um longer format so i suggest for next week um, i'll give a short intro to my zero tier jail smoosh and mm -hmm. um that should give a good introduction to why why i want uids and state machines um because <laughs> uh I'll show some of the Ansible I wrote seven or eight years ago for it. And you go, okay, yeah, anyone would want to move away from that. Um, yeah, cool. All right. Yeah. All the right. moment you mentioned that at some point, I was like, wow, that sounds very cool. And uh, the, the sheer fluidity of your systems across data centers was great. So I think people enjoy that. There, I'm advocating yeah, yeah. for our little mini conference here. Mm. In 10 minutes, I'll, I'll see how we go. <clears throat> great. Cool. All right. At least for the day. Developer part, I think it's valuable to limit the length of the presentation, talk, demo, whatever. Discussion afterward included. 
so that the other topics don't stall out for lack of time for reviews. And for both, I think there could be value for an unrecorded part for either ranting and raving or brainstorming things which aren't, or other topics you don't want to uh, commit to the record. Mm, of yet. course, and that applies to CVEs, personal is issues, just, just let's play yeah. it by ear. Everyone's here is quite versed with online communication. I think we're safe. Okay, everyone, let's meet in a week. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you all.